Hello, Blenders, and welcome. Welcome to episode number 216 of Real Blend, a podcast that worships at the altar of Morbius. Look at this beauty right here. Come on. You're going to display have an idea. that in your home? Oh, yeah. I actually uh, put this on our dining room table uh, and Michelle got really upset. And then I put it on her nightstand um, <laughs> uh, because she told me I couldn't put it on the dining room table. So I moved it to her nightstand. Um, Kev, I had an idea for the uh, title of Morbius 2 of what they should call it. Do you have an idea? Oh, what, please. What? Uh, no, I would love to hear this. Uh, 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 let me see. Morbius 2. Yeah. A sequel to Morbius. M m wait, Morbius 2. Morbius? Well, that, that's exactly it. They'd still call it Morbius, but they'd spell it M O R E. Mor right, Morbius. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'd oh, I'd I would prefer Lesbius. Thank you very much. Uh, on this week's show, uh, we're talking Top Gun Mavericks, record breaking box office. Brilliant. <laughs> we're going to make uh, a Star Wars tier list. People like the tier list, but I have a feeling that after this one, they're not going to like it much more. Uh, this might be the end of the tier list as a concept. <laughs> or our friendship. <laughs> because when we fight. Um, the hardest it's usually either about the lion king or star wars my name is sean o'connell i'm the managing editor here at cinema blend joined as always <laughs> by kevin the lion king. mccarthy <laughs> kevin mccarthy of fox 5 in washington dc hello kev how are you sean gabriel jacob good to see you guys today and uh yeah i mean the box office for top gun i can't wait to get into that because Man, we are in movies are back. It just makes me happy. You know, I heard, I heard from so many people over the weekend who said they went to go see it, which made me thrilled. People who have, have oh. like admitted that they don't oh. normally go to the mm -hmm. movies. And this is when they went to. Dude, I had people at my station, my anchors, and we'll get into this because I will introduce Jake and everybody as well. But I, I definitely had people come up to me and saying this is the movie that's bringing me back to theaters. Mm -hmm. Like I had anchors who had not been to the theaters in two plus years uh, like my anchor Steve, my anchor Holly, uh, who were going specifically because they were like, this is the movie that's going to bring me back. I mean, like the power of that is just insane to me. Like, it, it's so cool that that's still a thing that makes me happy. You know, Oh, it's great. It's great. Uh, Jake Hamilton of Fox 32 in Chicago uh, went to go see Top Gun twice at the very least. Yeah. And, and then uh, my uh, my folks time. are my folks are coming to Chicago tomorrow. And I asked them, what do you want to do in this beautiful city of mine? And their answer was, we'd like to see that Top Gun. Well, I'll see and Top I'd Gun. Like to see Top Gun. And I think the last <laughs> time I was able to get them both to the movies, uh, I think it was Mad Max Fury Road was the last time I was able to get them both yeah. to the big screen. So it's I, definitely I tweeted, that kind um, of movie. Yeah, I saw I what you tweeted. tweeted. Yeah, I saw what I you thought, tweeted. Uh, people, uh, people thought that was controversial. That I thought Top Gun was better than Mad Max, but. You guys know. Well, it I mean, really now that, that, that is there. that's pretty bad. I, mean, I, don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. Let me let me you say something, it. because at the end of the day, Top Gun Maverick is a is an awesome movie and we'll dive into that. I know we have to get through what we're going to talk about on the show today, but Mad Max Fury Road is is on a whole completely different level than Top Gun Maverick. I mean, I'm, it's like, I'm, I don't think they're close, Jake. They're not even close. Sean just wakes up every every morning and chooses chaos. Right, right. That's kind of a ridiculous and, statement. And then I get pulled back down to earth by Gabe Kovach, our producer. Hello, Gabe. How are you? Stop. Stop rapping and, and wave hello to the people. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you boys doing? I've been moving what? all weekend. Uh, I was just so about to say, why is your why is your background blurred? What are you what are you ashamed so of? So if you're if you're watching on YouTube, you most likely are not seeing video footage of me. I'm still setting up my office. I might even sound different. I might sound kind of no. kind of echoey. We'll see. He's, but um, yeah, hopefully next week by next week, I should be like at least 90 percent set up. I might need some new equipment. We'll see how it's going to go. I'm trying to make a cool Gabe, looking shot. It's barely on question. screen, but I haven't moved in a long time. How yeah. stressful was it? Uh, for me, it was a lot. It was a lot, mm. but it wasn't too bad. I only moved like a block away. So, mm. you know, that was helpful. Right. Was a lot. Well, I hope yeah. you're doing okay, man. Doing great. I could never move. Honestly, <laughs> we have so much crap in our house. Mm -hmm. I would just have to a burn lot. it all to the ground. Just all those copies over. of uh, Release the Snyder Cut. Yeah, it didn't sell. Damn, it's, uh, <laughs> That's not what I meant. That, that joke, that <laughs> joke ended up being far meaner than I intended it to. That's not what I meant. I swear. If you I, I actually I, sold I, very I, well. I, I, I've had that happen before, like you're in the middle of a joke and like, you know, as it's coming out, that it's not going to land how you're intending it. Then you go, you either commit to finishing it yeah, or you, you just commit to the bit <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then apologize right afterwards. <laughs> if you're watching us on YouTube, hello. Thank you so much for joining the show each week. Um, Notification squad, we love you, see you and hear you and appreciate you guys showing up. Uh, if you're here on YouTube, hit subscribe, turn on your notifications, join us here every single Friday. Um, 
If you want to hear more Real Blend, like on a Monday, even a bonus episode, uh, quite often with a very fun game that we play. It's called Real Blend Premium. You get an ad free version of the show, a newsletter from myself. Uh, and again, that extra uh, episode that drops on Mondays. So check the description down below for information on where to sign up. So Kev kind of brought this up already, but we're going to get into the box office results for Top Gun Maverick. Uh, you know, we always say like the beginning of May is the kickoff of summer and Doctor Strange had a big opening, a plenty big opening for a, a Marvel movie and, and really was kind of the official kickoff of summer. But but this one felt like uh, the one that really got the blockbuster season up and running. And we're going to go into uh, Jurassic World Dominion at this point, and then we'll have Thor Love and Thunder and a bunch of other summer blockbusters. But Top Gun sort of got the, the box office summer box office rolling with a domestic take of now this is as of tuesday june 31st we are recording this and the domestic May. numbers that we see here is 156 million dollars uh an international take of 126 million dollars for a worldwide gross of 282 million dollars some uh points of notice it is tom cruise's first uh a 100 million dollar opening weekend i find that staggering um it's you know, I guess his movies end up having legs, but don't open huge. Uh, I thought at least some of the Mission Impossible movies would do well at this yeah, point. And what's fascinating about that about that piece of information is like his largest opening of all time prior to domestically prior to Top Gun Maverick is War of the Worlds. Um, I think it did like 64 million or whatever it was. And I think Fallout was at like 61. But all the mission films open like the, I always wonder. This is such an interesting thing. This is happening because I always wondered why the mission films, they would open up number one and they would be like 60 million. I'd be like, huh? And it just yeah. seemed weird because they were so large. And they were then so you wake well up like two months later and you go, oh, it crossed 300 million. Like when right. the hell did that happen? 700 yeah. million or whatever. Um, but Sean brings up a point at the beginning of that, that that I think is really important to, to take home here because we've had plenty of films in the pandemic that have opened to higher than Top Gun. Uh, mm -hmm. Plenty would be the wrong word, but No Way Home, Doctor Strange. Sure. Uh, and my point being is that like this one, as you said, feels different. There's a there's a while it is a franchise, technically it, it is a sequel. It is a, an existing thing. You just, uh, you know, 36 years later, there's really no idea of where this thing might land or how big it might be um also the idea of them holding it and not releasing it on streaming um is is obviously this is a huge win for the theatrical considering mm -hmm. that they could have done that and sold it off or whatever they needed to do or whatever had to do to make money during the pandemic and even though we're still in it but to your point there's something celebratory about how big this is opening even though it's not no way home numbers because i think no way home you just expect that large, oh, massive yeah. Marvel, two, Marvel's two, a brand, know, right? It's thing. almost as if like it's almost as if Doctor Strange, when it opens to 180 million or whatever it opens up to, it's like, yeah, that's a that's a Who's good number. Also, for, like not to be disrespectful, but it, it, we're three weeks, what, two weeks later, three weeks later. And who's talking about Doctor Strange right now? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's some people in the circles, the Marvel I, people. Still, I think still I think people, people are still going to be still. talking about Top Gun come July and August. I think so. Yeah, because I, for I every person and, and Kevin, I, I experienced the same thing you did. People finding me in my newsroom uh, yesterday and today to tell me that they went out to the movies, people that haven't been back. But for every person who I know uh, went and saw it and absolutely loved it, uh, I've had two or three people come up and go like, hey, haven't had a chance. Like, I'm absolutely going to go see it. I, haven't had, I didn't get a chance to this weekend, but I'm 100 percent like everyone's talking about it. I have to go see it. So I, yeah. I think as well as it did. I still think it's going to continue to do massive numbers. And I've, we I've been really a, happy because a lot of people, I'm sorry, a lot of people have been coming up to me that are going to IMAX because mm -hmm. of either our interview with Kaczynski or whatever. If I mentioned it on the air, people are going out to actual air and space museums or the largest cool. IMAXs they can find. And they're seeing a film that, you know, took them to a theater that they may not have ever gone to for a feature film. And now they're going to sit there and go, oh, this is this is what an IMAX feature film can play like. Oh, my God, because it played like a rock concert. I saw it again last Thursday on a six and a half story IMAX screen uh, at the Udvar Hazi and Chantilly here in the air and space in Virginia. And it was it was astounding. I'd never seen anything like it. It was so big and so large and massive. Um, but I, I the numbers that you're talking about are so big because not only did it 
it's the highest opening of Tom Cruise's career domestically. I don't know if it's worldwide or it's, I know it's domestically for sure. Um, but it also is the highest opening Memorial Day weekend movie of all time. Mm-hmm. I mean, yesterday, when the numbers were released on Monday, it was like 151 and we were like four or three, it four was like just under pirates of pirates at World's End. Oh, right. And so and gotcha. then all of a sudden it finally today or yesterday, late yesterday, it took over. Uh, it is now. I mean, I know that inflation and ticket prices are different and we, we all get that. Um, but for a film and this business, I, I just you know, you guys, have to, you guys, you guys know this at the start of the pandemic. You know, I was, you know, besides the actual idea of the pandemic and what it was doing to the world from a business perspective, you definitely I was worried that movie theaters were never going to come back. I was worried that movies and the theatrical experience I was just really concerned about. Now, obviously, there's many more things to concern about, you know, with the pandemic and people, well, you know, getting it. But the, at the end of the day, I was just happy to see that the movie theater stayed alive. Okay, That's really all throw, I'm saying. I'm going to cold water this a little bit because I, I, I appreciate your enthusiasm. I think it's fantastic. And I think you're right. Like, this is exciting for people to go back to the movie theaters. And I had we went to graduation parties uh, over the weekend and I had people like Jake was saying people were coming up to me and, and saying, I'm sorry, I didn't get the Top Gun this weekend. I just couldn't find this. Like, like it was they were offending me, basically, at this point. And I was like, that's OK. There's plenty of time. Well, weirdly, what he's not telling week. you is that at that graduation party, he was wearing that Top Gun shirt. I was not wearing it, but I probably should have. But I will say here are a couple of things that I heard um, from people who have returned to the movies for the first time in a very long time. A uh, friend of mine went to the Dolby Theater uh, to experience it because he had heard that's one of the ways to experience it. He said um, by the time he was finished with the Jurassic trailer, uh, the Thor Love and Thunder trailer and one other big bombastic trailer, he was like, I'm, I'm sick of my seat shaking. I'm sick of all this. And then for the two hours of Top Gun, it was like, it was too much. It was overkill, right? Like some of us pay to go for this immersion. We really want it, but maybe the casual audience doesn't necessarily want it. The other thing I heard from people was, oh man, I went back to the movies, had a great time with Top Gun. It was fantastic, but uh, bought two bottles of water uh, and a thing of popcorn for my wife and I, and it cost me 50 bucks. Um, so I'm probably not going back to the theaters for a long time. Like these are the things that we have to kind of remember that like the casual audience that is only going to go to one or two things there's still a couple of things about the theatrical experience that the theaters, I think, need to work on in order to keep the regular audience uh, coming back. You know, they're, they're pricing themselves out of 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 the experience and making it. That's, feel that's like, where their revenue comes from. Yeah. Though. Remember, they're not they're I not understand. making their money on tickets. I mean, the studios I are yeah. I mean, they're movie, making movie theaters some, are in the but, popcorn business. Right. right. And I mean, a, a Pepsi or a large popcorn is how those theaters are staying alive. And also at the end of the day. I mean, you could say the same thing about concerts. You could say the same thing about going to see sure. Hamilton at a, at, yeah. a, at a at a at a play or a musical. Um, when you go out of the house to go to an event type situation, sure, movie theaters are more expensive now. But to me, like for okay, so for, uh, for more example, when I went and saw it Thursday in IMAX, it was a fifteen dollar ticket. Uh, there was two trailers, Avatar and Mission Impossible. That was it. And then the movie started. Um, so everybody clearly has a very different experience, no matter what theater you go to. Um, I think you can find horror stories at any any type of event, concert, football game, yeah. basketball game, whatever and also it's going to be. The movie, con- the, the whole like narrative of movie concessions are expensive has been a thing since I remember going to theaters as a kid. Like I remember my right. parents when I was little, like, been like man, these popcorn so expensive. And it was like three dollars at the time. Like like it that's like that's not I new understand. people complaining no, no, no. about, you know. I understand. I'm it's just expensive saying. and we're we're not Why saying do it's you not hate expensive. film, Sean? Is what it's we're saying. Funny. But I also, hang out with like, no, they loved it. They had a great time. Yeah. They definitely had a great time. But I wouldn't. I, this I'm is when Sean to told everyone the, at the party, "I don't pay to go to movies. I don't know what is what oh, what, is, what, what is what are what do movies cost these days? Like two hundred dollars? I don't know. You money to go to the movies? That's unfortunate. You guys should do something else. No, believe me, these <laughs> these people are are doing just fine. And don't have to worry about the price of a ticket. So, uh, uh quick before we move on, Gabe, I know you're you're moving us to go, but quick uh, guesses on drop off uh, percentage wise. For weekend two, I'm going to say I'm going to be uh, very liberal and say 40, 45 yeah, percent. I was going to say 40, 40. OK, I, I was going to honestly, I would say 40 edging less. OK, all right. Be curious. To see it's also it going to have a lot of repeat viewings like I, my, one of the anchors uh, who went and saw it was like, I'm going again. 
Is there a big? Like, there's no big movie, right? This weekend's no. kind of the, casual. The next one is Jurassic. Jurassic. Yeah, the next Jurassic one's Jurassic. Next one. Okay, um, so we don't have an interview this week uh, with a big time director or celebrity. In which case, we go back to the tier list. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, we are going to attempt the Star Wars tier list with Obi Wan uh, now being on Disney Plus. And um, this is a good time, as good a time as any, to start putting the 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 Star Wars saga into perspective. And uh, and I'll remind everybody up top of where we all kind of rank. Jake is our our diehard resident Star Wars fan. Kevin and I are, are fans, um, but I'd say Kevin this fair, right? A little more casual than Jake, right? Yeah I, yeah, I mean, I I yeah, I'm a Star Wars fan, but I am not obsessed with Star Wars. Like gotcha. I like Christopher Nolan. It to me is my Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, He's my Star Wars. Enough. Yeah, and yeah. Gabe, I, I I like Gabe's taste in Star Wars because he. He goes off the beaten path with certain things and justifies it. I like you just mean one so movie. Do you mean one movie that I like differently? I mean, I mean, yeah, the last Jedi. Right. We'll get to that. So. We'll get to that. That's right. my yes, beaten path. Let's go. Game um, on. Star Wars. Tier all maker. right. Uh, yeah. So if you're new to the tier list, if you've never seen one of these before, we're going to go through the Star Wars movie and TV canon and rank them on a list from S to F. Um, we also have um, some a, 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 a row for haven't seen because I do believe we're going to run into a number of the animated projects that we haven't seen or seen in full and kind of unfair to try to rank it like that. Um, chime chime in in the comments if uh, you want to chastise us and, and make us watch those. Um, I've heard good things about all of them. Um, but yeah, and also if you enjoy this format, uh, take a look uh, if you're on YouTube or wherever you're finding us on the podcast. We've put together a Marvel tier list. It's good. It's good. Good stuff. And Jake has a lightsaber. Yes, um, but let's kick things <laughs> off. Ooh. We're going to go in chronological order, release order, I should say. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, episode four, A New Hope. Episode four, A New Hope. Who wants that's to an kick S. us off? Come on, that's an S. Let's go. Right? Let's, let's get this more. right. Let's get this right off the top. That's an S. I think it's an I A. A. I feel it's an A. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> I feel it's an A. And I'll tell you A. why. Um, let's, let's I literally it. just rewatched mm-hmm. uh, A New Hope last night oddly enough inspired by uh obi-wan and you inspire me to want to kill myself oh come on definitely (laughs) settle down (laughs) with that um it it, it's just an it's an a it's not it's not a perfect movie by any stretch guys yeah it is it it is it is the quintessential cinematic adventure with That's classic Empire. heroes and villains. No, no. That's Empire. No. Empire no, is, is better than New Hope. Empire is better than New Hope. It's way it better is. than New it Hope, is. actually. It is. And it both is. are S's. We haven't even gotten to Empire yet. But no. oh my God, Gabe, Gabe. You, come on. You, 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 you forget that Lucas is not a great director. He is a good director. He, like the, uh, the but Empire he directed the back. hell out of Star Wars. A New Hope. Yeah, but Empire is such a yes, massive Yes, it is. But you forward. can't do that. We can't do that. that was, those are the rules. We can't Man. do that. Okay. I was surprised last night during the rewatch, literally, literally last night, not even knowing we were doing this, this uh, S tier of how much time is wasted uh, with them running around the Death Star, just shooting at stormtroopers. Oh, my like God. It took, this is took forever to get I, to I love a new game. Hope. I no longer want to do this. I can't do this. <laughs> I, I, can't, it, I can't do this. We can't start off is, this way. It's an A. You know it's an oh, A. Wow. It's no. No. Okay, oh, my so God. The enemies you are about to make in the comment section. Oh, my God. Oh, Mark Hamill's a little bad. Section. Mark Hamill's a little bad. He's a little bit. A little bit. What are you talking oh about? In terms of being an actor, he's not oh really an god. actor. Wait, what? Oh my god, Joker! Sean, you're saying you're saying you talking you're saying about? the definitive Joker later. is not. No, later. Oh, okay. Later, oh he got god. much better. I thought later you were just much blanketly. Better. I thought you were just blanketly no, 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 no. tearing down. At that Mark stage Hamill. in his career, Gary, he's please. so young and he's so green. Right. So here's an issue. Quite good. Here's an issue that I don't know how to solve because there's only four of us. I think it's an S. It is oh, an it's S. Not, it's not an S, man. It's an I A. I think it's an S, man. It's, it is it's an S. Star Wars. When it came out, it was yes. Star Wars. It's an Dude. S. Empire Strikes Back is also Star Wars. And that's it's an, an S. S. And it's an S. Yeah, you're right. But I can S. understand the culture making something popular doesn't no, it's necessarily great, mean that it's... That it, it is great. It is great. Yes, yeah. it is great. We're giving it an A. Oh that is a great rating. It yes. is not but an it's S. not the rating, rating it deserves. Well, that's so, your opinion. So here, here's a here's a rule that I we don't have these rules written down. Uh, so again, chastise us in the comments if we're 
if we're going back on something. But I believe I've said this before that S has to be um, special. It has to be it has to be overwhelmingly S to be S. We always talk about like A trending Gabe. S or A trending B. And Jake, unfortunately, I think we have no. to lose. I think what? that the tie. I think that the, the tie goes to an A. I think is what it has. I can't help that they're idiots. I know. Dude, no, first I. of all, well, hey, 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 hey. First of all, an A. W- w- do you remember? Do you know what an A means? When you were in high school and middle school, right. what did an A? What did, no, I'm all saying. Right. What did an A mean? What did an A? No, no. You, you just called me an idiot, so I'm going to no, defend I'm it. Sorry. What? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have called you an idiot. It's all good. I love you. I do have to say, that by definition, when we say something belongs to be an S, that it has to be special. Like I understand, you could make the argument Star Wars yes. is special. Yes, I don't understand. I understand how, like, that. If there, if there, if there were ever right. a movie that we've ever done a tier <laughs> list for that ridiculous. belongs in the S. It's insane that a new hope is not going in the S category. But it's just weird that the next it, movie. It, honestly, it, it doesn't. You can't. We can't do that. We're not allowed yeah, again, to do that. Although, just otherwise, doing this I mean, movie. that's. I mean, I, otherwise, every freaking Marvel movie. We're like, well, hell, we put it every every Marvel movie we gave an S to. All right. If it had a superhero in it, oh, S stands for superhero. I will. I have a new I hope. Not an S. All right. So we still have two. Sean, you sound like you were wavering. It's it, Sean, like, come you on, S, like you're right. S, S belongs for something special. They call the pop culture phenomenon. Sean, I'll give you one more. Hope. Sean, so, so, one av- so Avatar was a pop culture phenomenon. No, it's not. Because it's no. Hold on. It, 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 it's it not. Two point seven billion dollars. Pop- pop- is, is, does that mean it's an S? No, because it's not a pop culture. It doesn't. Thing. It doesn't have the lasting oh, impact the Star Wars has. You know, it does. They didn't just hold Avatar celebration in Anaheim as part of its annual celebration of the fandom, essentially. Um. I, I I'm standing by A, but I'll I'm go I'm fine with S if you want to put S. I, I'm fine. Well, well, fine. hang on. You have to you you are now the deciding factor. I am. Yeah. How am I deciding factor? Because if you waver, then we have three S's and it's an S. Or if you're if you're a trending S. No, no, see, Sean. I, I, no, S has to be off the pressure here. Well, you no, know, no, 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 he's I'm, I'm, I'm staying with A. I'm staying with, <laughs> a. with a. All right. I'm staying this, with this a. This list right, right off the top has lost all credibility. I want to timestamp if everyone can yes. clip this. Is this is the beginning of the end of our podcast. <laughs> we are going to be removed <laughs> from pop oh culture. Oh my god! A new hope uh, is an A. This is. Oh my god! It's right. a great it, movie. Honestly, it, it like I, I'm like meh it's, on doing this. The rest terrific. of the list. It's, ter- it's is a terrific re- movie. I, 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 I genuinely thought that we'd be halfway through because I thought we would have blown through a new hope. <laughs> it's a already. terrific movie with I d- flaws. I did not know. We're, you're a terrific person with flaws. All right. Let's go ahead and move on with episode five, The Empire Strikes Back. It sounds like we all already agreed it's an S. S. That's an S. I don't know. The color of the snow wasn't white enough. I don't know. Maybe it's going to be A. All right. All right, Jake. We got a lot of controversial Star Wars things to get through. I need you to. I need you to. I need you to hold, hold back. An S. And, and also, if what I think what Jake is missing here is that we all know that New Hope's a great movie. Every yeah. one of us knows that. No We're one's not saying, saying you it's don't. not. No one's saying you know. It's not an S though. It's not an S. That's fine. Yeah. If, if, if Star Wars and New Hope is not an S, then 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 what are we even doing with these tier lists? Well, for? Let me ask you a question, Jake. Which movie is better, Empire or New Hope? Empire, of course. But you guys both put Endgame and Infinity War in the S category, exactly. and Infinity War is yeah. infinitely better than Endgame is. Yeah. Empire Strikes Back, Episode Five. <laughs> Do we all agree it's an S? Perfect film. Perfect yes, film. That's an, that is an S. At least no we question. Agree on something. <sighs> okay. It's. Empire, uh, Empire is a perfect. Star there's going to be movie. so much more controversy. We we're we're in the we're I in the, be honest, the original I don't trilogy. Think there's going to be any more controversy, anything more controversial than than, than a that, new hope yeah. in the day. Yeah, sure. Wait, so sure, we sure. get to episode eight. I was going to say there's a no, lot but, but that's but already. Where, I think that's already well established where we all stand on that. We know where we're at. All right, Return of the Jedi. That's an A. A. That's an A. All right. That's a B. Oh God, Gabe! Do you think I, it's an A? There is there is no original trilogy that's a B. I think Hot it's an take: a. I prefer Jedi over New Hope, but Gabe, I still think, think Jedi an is an A. I think it's an A. All right, yeah, then yeah. it's an A. But it's an First A because the, e- the Ewoks suck. They suck. They're sucking. <laughs> they're they're suck. stupid. You know what's they're weird? Is as stupid. I as I get older, the Ewoks don't bother me. I mean, it, it, it presents no. this idea of like like this culture that's able to take on the Empire, and that's that's what Star Wars is all about. Two quick things toys. I want to mention uh, <laughs> yeah. Jedi Return of the Jedi. Um, yeah, that's easily an A because it has one of my favorite Star Wars scenes of all time, which was when Vader Vader's helmet comes off. So good. And like, I think everything that, on the like, Death to, Star is fantastic. I think I think the whole Palpatine every, every that entire I love Return of the Jedi. I actually think Return of the Jedi. Is, and I said it's better than New Hope. 
But I think A New Hope and Return of the Jedi, to me, are on even playing fields of like what they do. But like okay. at the end of the day, you know, Jake's not wrong about what the influence of Star Wars. But we are rating these on the actual movie itself. This sure. is what this is tier, this tier list is. So you, you have to take all that out of it and just look at the film. And that's kind of what we're doing here. And we're we're saying these are all great movies. And but Jedi is so damn good. I would almost argue Jedi could be S tier, but I wouldn't go that far. I think Empire is the quintessential quintessential they all, they Star Wars. movie. Ass. Yeah, they're all they're all great. I all mean, this, these the, movies the stuff are great. that honestly, the, I would even be a trending S because like, yes, the, the easy the easy argument is Ewoks. But like Jabba's Palace and the whole oh, like, the fight opening. On, yeah, the opening, the opening is incredible. Yeah. The the fight between oh. like Luke's green lightsaber just looks so good. Um, everything agree. with Palpatine and Vader on the and yeah, it's like me. take take yeah. Ewoks out of it. But the, like the like the the race and the like on the speeders through the trees of Endor is incredible. So like you like. Yes, like the the like say what you want to about the Ewoks, however you feel about them, whatever. But like, yeah, I would say a trending S for for Jedi, actually. Yeah, and but Jake brings up a great point. Like, I what's so funny is like I, I you look back at like you know New Hope and Empire and Jedi. There are scenes that I think about more from Jedi and Empire than I do from A New Hope. Uh, but going back to Jedi, for example, the opening of Jedi is my favorite opening of the entire trilogy of that original trilogy. And I know I love the Hoth sequence, obviously, in the beginning of um, Empire. But that opening, They're all, with, all those openings are really iconic, like, though, like damn, they're amazing. Opening. Yeah. Oh, but I, I just think Jedi's opening. So who directed Jedi? Who was the director on that? Oh, Richard Marquard. Mark Wong. So, okay, so Lucas did New Hope, Irving Kirshner did Empire, and mm -hmm. then it's so funny, we never talk about Jedi's director. Yeah. It's so interesting. Or, or Empire's he, director. I'm not sure what he went on to do. Yeah. But at the I end know, of the day, like, it also, like, is, yes, Lucas doesn't get directing credit, but, like, he was on set a lot. Mostly, it was because he was forming Lucasfilm at that time. Um, right. But he was but very I, much like on set and making decisions. And it was basically right. like he kind of just needed someone on the ground, like kind of arranging things to, because to he was also the busy. plan kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah. But Jake, aren't you, I mean, like in terms of like filmmakers and filmmaking, like there is a jump in quality from from New Hope to Empire to Jedi in terms of like, well, I'm not saying Jedi is better that's than not Empire. Fair be, that's not fair I, to say because I do new, think there's well, better directors. On. Well, no, a New Hope wasn't was an indie film. Yeah. Like like a new hope wasn't a wasn't a studio picture. It was so was Rocky. I mean, like I mean, like okay, you, but Rocky go, didn't have a of starfighters in space fighting each other. Like the, the no, jump in quality is is I think warranted by the success of of what they were able to do with. But see, not nothing, but with a much smaller set of resources. This then goes to the argument of because a film did X, Y, Z because of its time period that like uh, you could argue that Citizen Kane is the greatest movie ever made because a lot of it, people do. It, yep, I know, but I don't think it is. But like you could argue that because of what it did for deep focus and, and well, things like well, that. And what well, no, Orson not, did at 26 uh, years old. I'm not you know saying what I mean? I'm not saying that about New Hope. I'm just saying specifically you were saying there was a jump in quality. And I was like, there is no, a uh, jump in uh, quality making quality. Not not effects. I'm talking about filmmaking. Like 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 but the I, I, the I don't think you're giving Lucas enough credit for how much yeah. he was involved there's in a, that. There's no uh, all right. There's a this this needs to be clarified. George Lucas is a phenomenal storyteller and a phenomenal uh, um, a brilliant mind in creating new material that changed cinema. No question. I just don't think he's a good director. But I think That's you're underestimating. But what I'm saying is I think you're underestimating how much he actually did direct Empire and Return of the Jedi. Right. And also, I think we're underselling the, I mean, even just the, the Death Star fight in A New Hope, like yeah. the way that they oh, shot that. Talk about ground, like groundbreaking filmmaking, amazing filmmaking. I love like, New get, Hope, let, man. I'm not saying you don't. I'm not telling you that you don't. I'm just, I'm let, just saying. Let's get to the next three movies to talk about whether George Lucas can direct or not, since he directed <laughs> the next three. I'm just, I think the point I'm making at the end of the day is I'm happy that Irving Kirshner came in and did Empire. I think that movie succeeded. Not, I know Lucas's fingerprints are all over it. I know he was there on the ground. But a director really is about getting performance and keeping story together. I think the performances in Empire are better than New Hope. I just do. I think that Han comes. In, I mean, they're well, all. I mean, they're, they're they're all. They have more to do. Like it's it, like right. these are all these are all kind of unfair arguments. I feel like. I know. I know. I just find it fascinating that directors changed in those three in those three films, and I think the films were better because of we it. are going to take a quick break and we come back no. we'll pick things <laughs> this back is gonna up be the longest episode ever with the prequel trilogy uh after this i think this is message. great 
Yeah, I called an idiot before four o'clock today. This is great. He didn't call you an idiot. He called you both an idiot. <laughs> Collectively. <laughs> so that means each half an idiot. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. All right, and we are back. See, to me, this is, by the way, I'm sorry, I know we're back. But, okay, we're back. Uh, like, 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 go, go ahead, ahead, go ahead, we're back. We're back. I was going to say, this is the reason why I love doing this show. Because, again, we are all coming at this from completely different perspectives of what we love yeah. in film. Um, and I do think that people are probably going to come after Sean and I, you know, in terms of this oh, tier list. And, we all have, but, we all have controversial opinions on this list we're coming here, up. So you know? yeah, yeah no, let's go. No, it's good. I stopped looking fun. at my Twitter months ago. That's a good call. That's a good call. Yeah. Um, episode one, the Phantom Menace. C. Released in 1999. I one thing I, one, go one thing I find fascinating B. about this, B, C, Jake. I'm going to say, I'm going to say B. I'm going to say B as well. Yes! It's well, okay. can, I, can, I, can I make an argument for B? Sure. Well, okay. let's, let's let it is, Gabe... Oh, go, go, go. I was going to say, it's just, I, I, it's tangible. Like, they're, like they, they, yeah. they traveled to Tunisia, they, they built sets. Mm -hmm. Like, they really, and we'll talk about this when we get to two. Two is really where his fascination and obsession with blue screens took over. But yeah. one, mm -hmm. for, for its flaws, and God knows it has it, <laughs> It still feels like a Star Wars movie. It feels very like I feel like I know how everything it, it you know, like it feels tangible. You know, it feels like Ooh. there's an aesthetic to it. So so even even though it is flawed, it does. It still feels like a Star Wars movie. Also, what's interesting about Phantom Menace and what's funny enough, if you were to like think about Phantom Menace, it, it isn't a great movie, but there are so many things about it that I look back on as some of my favorite Star Wars moments, but also like the music Williams wrote for the, oh. the whole, that whole, the duel of fate sequence. That Amazing. is to me, one of the greatest pieces of cinematic music I have ever heard. It brings me back to the scene completely. Do you just hearing it? Um, the pod race is awesome. Uh, the, you know, I, I, really like that film but you know I, I as i'm watching it though the jar jar Binks stuff i know this is typical and everyone brings that up it is so bad and it, it's one of those weird things where as you're watching it you go oh the movie's fun because that opening with obi-wan and you know liam neeson quite, another great sequence, opening yeah great opening the, um, that's like an, that's now like a like an iconic star wars trope of like sticking the lightsabers through the door and like slowly dude, cutting it open like it's like a trope of star wars from that opening. that whole scene like is amazing and then like it, it, and there are, are obvious jumps in quality when you go back and forth between certain characters but i do think phantom menace is a little underrated yeah um, I, that's, you know. that was the point i was going to bring up that i find fascinating that i'd love i, I don't someone maybe has asked hayden christensen and and um ewan mcgregor about this with the press run for for obi-wan but I feel like it went through sort of a weird phase where the the prequels were like were sort of the the laughing stock of the of the franchise uh, for a while. And then I remember we were at Star Wars Celebration for um, the 20th anniversary of Phantom Menace and they were celebrating that and there was like love all over the place for it. And I remember around that time it, with that when that came back up for the anniversary a lot of the discussion online was like these are underrated these are great and i think it had to do with a lot of people like my age and our age who you know similar we talk about the um schumacher batman batman movies growing up and being like no like we we appreciate those for what they were and like they're special to us and stuff and for so whom I, they were made like yeah. lucas always talks about the fact that like yes i get uh, adults get all up in arms clearly right. about these movies but at the end of the day like they're kids movies like he yeah. makes them for kids and so i just okay. find it interesting the way the discussion around it has changed because i feel like now you know we yeah. put it in b and i feel like we're not we're not in the minority there yeah. putting it up in b yeah and well, here's where because, i put it at yeah. c because I feel like there are there are two things at play in in the prequels. One is there a lot of it is made for kids and is really mm. silly, like and and then that gives Lucas the ability to say like oh it's just for kids like with Jar Jar like Jar Jar is a truly awful character and it's I feel an really bad character. for the guy who played him he doesn't yeah. deserve all the hate that he gets but he's a is a poorly conceived character and it's a poorly bad. executed character. Um, and there's a lot of goofy shit with the clones, those tiny little robot clones. And a lot of it stuff is played for humor. That's really like Kevin keeps sending us the, the clip in the in the text thread of, of a fart joke. Like there's a fart joke, like a, oh, a that's horrific a jar fart jar joke. scene. <laughs> but then at the, and then on the flip side, there's this really dry and incredibly boring political side to the to the uh, prequels that is heavy, heavy in Phantom Menace. And I don't feel like those those 
sides ever they never meet anywhere um it, so it there are interesting sequences in phantom menace like i do agree that the pod race is exciting and i the the fight against darth maul at the end is exciting awesome but there's too much bloated crap around all that stuff that can't i mean that's why i said c and I, yeah. i'm pretty strong on c but if you but three say b that's fine i think c is no, a no, fair depending on where you fall on it I, I don't think c is like an outlandish place to put i it. agree i i would i would be b trending c Sure. Um, but but I but I give it the the B arc because or the B upper arc, because I think that there are things in that film that I'm happy exist and happy right. happened. And like, I remember um, it's weird because it's weird putting it so close to New Hope and Jedi. But it's oh. it's 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 an interesting aspect. I, 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 I am B trending C, but I've grown to become a fan of Phantom Menace a little more over the years. Yeah, yeah. honestly, I, 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 th- I, I think yeah. of the prequels, I think Phantom Menace is the best. I need, I, to, I re- like I need to rewatch them to pick which one's the That's best because the third one pick. is. I like Sith. Although I do like, remember, we'll get, I do. Yeah, I like a lot of the. Uh, well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Let's uh, let's move on to episode two, Attack of the Clones. F. I'm curious how low we are going to put <laughs> this F from Kevin, which. <laughs> It's a strong. It's a strong opinion. F. Yeah, I, I can't it's go awful. that far down. Oh, um, no. Yes, you can. <laughs> uh, uh, Sean, are you feeling D. D? I'd probably go D. I'd probably go D. Uh, I, I would also go D. Um, yeah. I think it's the only truly bad live action Star Wars film. What are its um, redeeming qualities? Sorry, finish your point. John, you want, John but, Williams um, love score is some of his most beautiful work. Yeah, um, he's fantastic. Um, no matter what the dialogue is, somehow I think Ewan, as we've seen both the prequels and now with Obi Wan, Ewan makes his Obi Wan work. Like it just it. You know, I know a lot of people rag on Hayden's performance and rightfully so, and then people try to defend it by saying, "Well, it's because the dialogue is bad." It's like you know what, Ewan had bad dialogue too, and he, somehow he made it work. Um, but he got to say his dialogue with a British accent. That's always true. more interesting. True. Uh, Attack of the Clones is so, so great. bad. I, I agree with oh, you. And, and, and I agree with you. It is. It is bad. I don't think. I, I just don't. I don't think an, an F live action Star Wars exists. I, just I would argue it's one of the worst movies ever made. Ah. Wow. Ah. What worst are movies yeah, ever made? I, I still haven't heard any redeeming qualities. What other redeeming qualities to it? Well, well, I just gave you two of them. Um, but but we have you and being good um, in the other ones and, and, and we have williams is scored the, the uh ones. the dooku the dooku yeah. yoda fight is in uh yeah is great yeah, but th- isn't this cg yoda though i again I, i've made this i've made this point before i tend to i've i've turned a new leaf in my life the last couple years where i i sort of disregard the cgi stuff i think that it's inevitable that that stuff ages i think that there's too many factors you know we talk about black panther being a fantastic movie but because they were making infinity war it didn't get the love it deserved or whatever and there's too many factors for cgi to be good um and yeah, but very, cgi very, yoda was a bad idea in general wait is yeah, cgi it's early is on the clones it's early where on. he fights dooku and he's yes. he's, he's forcing all over the place yeah. it's badass <laughs> oh, fuck that movie that's a d no no that's <laughs> badass that's a d it's <laughs> terrible I, he doesn't look any better jake, in i'm Revenge glad of the i'm Sith glad that you and i are star wars fans jake because I think you are <laughs> flipping around. Because, because we're giving a title of loads of D. We're Star no, Wars no, fans. No, 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 no. No, not the letter. No, I, I, I'm, I'm saying him not liking... Uh, I'm not saying Jake's him... D. I'm saying him not liking Yoda in a battle. It's badass. Oh. Yeah, but if, if Yoda looks better in the 77 film than Yoda it does in Attack of the Clones... Who didn't, well, he's not in the 77 fight. film. Oh, well, no, I mean, in, in whatever the 70... Whatever the 80 film was. Yeah, but well, whatever it's, it's, it was, it's but, a lot easier to make someone waddle from one side of a house to the other right. than it is to make hey. them... I think that's unfair. Hey. I'm, not, I just, I'm not saying just what Frank really Oz felt, had to do, but I, I think that's an unfair comparison. I really felt through the course of the prequels that George Lucas was doing the Gus Van Sant, like, Jesus, Ben, I'm busy. <laughs> like, counting his money mm-hmm. and not really being concerned with know. the details. I mean, but it's, it's one of those things well, where... Why did he put see, it off so long? You, well, that, well, that's the, the thing. Like, you always... But, I, but even then, I would argue... I don't think the technology was ready to go for you for what for what it was you want to do. The whole reason he put Maybe. off the prequels is because, yeah, like Gabe said, but, he's waiting on the technology to catch but up. I, but based on but what I he wanted to do... I think that is... Uh, that is uh, in hindsight, that's great to say. But mm-hmm. in 1999... And post Jurassic Park and all these things, like right, 
they were on the cutting edge yeah. of what we could do, and it was groundbreaking but stuff. And it, but and it, it was yeah, uh, and, pretty and incredible. And what like, year is Attack of the Clones? Two thousand two. Two thousand two. What year is Terminator Two? Ninety. Uh, we cannot keep I mean, this comparing weird, things yeah. to Terminator Two. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, they're just different. Saying, they're man. different. I'm no, they do different so things. D. They do different things. So it's a things. D. It's a D. It's a D for sure. It's a D for sure. You said F though, Kev, for posterity's sake. You're you're. Uh, it's an F. I, I I would even put it and have it seen so I could erase it. <laughs> Don't you wish? <laughs> <laughs> like can we just like all erase it? Um, <laughs> let's get right. Let's keep it moving and go right into Revenge of the Sith. Um, B. Episode three. B. That's it. That's I'd say B. That's say B. Yeah. B. Okay. Yeah. I'm fine. I like B. I like yeah, B. I feel like B. I'm B trending C. Um, I would, it's I been would a while since I've well. seen episode um, three. Because some of the I, I rewatched it recently to get ready for Obi Wan. And for every great moment, and there are like I the the fight between Obi Wan and Anakin on Mustafar is fantastic. Mm, William's score awesome. in that moment that like that like the hero's battle, hero's journey is is just again some of his best work. But Lord there Vader. is still I... some there's still some bad stuff in that movie. Oh yeah, like it's that, it's yeah. it's though it's I would argue it's the widest range of material in any of the prequels. Like well, it's the in terms of like great and oh my god that's terrible yoda versus palpatine is a horrendous fight it's, it's, <laughs> you think so it, it, oh it, i think it looks <laughs> terrible terrible when they're hauling you know the senate chairs or whatever yeah. those disc things are at each other I, I think it looks i think it they might as well have animated the whole damn thing at that point i don't understand why they it doesn't look good at all <laughs> but i think you and i think you and really saves most of that yeah. movie and uh and it, it's the first, it's the only ones of the prequels that to me legitimately feel like they have stakes. Yeah. Okay. But there's, yeah. but there's I, some I, weight to it. Did I, did I tell you guys my story about asking you and McGregor about the, you were the chosen one scene and it, yeah. and it kind yeah, it kind of, he didn't you know, remember for, it. It, it well, just the, and, and I get why, because because I asked for people at home, I asked you and McGregor about what I think is one of the best scenes in, in Star Wars, which is, you know, Anakin screaming, screaming, crying out in, in pain and agony, burning alive. And you and you and Obi-Wan saying you were the chosen one and like he's heartbroken and it's such a great moment. And I wanted a really great answer from you and about shooting that. And he basically chalked it up to I don't remember. But his reasoning was and I get this. He's like, dude, you have, to, you have to keep in mind every day we went to set, we were acting in front of a blue screen. He goes, so I, I can't differentiate one day from the yeah. next because it was all one big giant blur and as disappointed as i was to hear like i don't remember shooting that scene i also 110 percent get what he's saying like it was just all one big blue blur i get what he's saying but the line means something yeah right the dialogue well, I, should mean yeah. something i spent 30 you, seconds trying to pr trying to prove you to you mcgregor that his first line was something <laughs> that he didn't remember <laughs> Well, you, heard, you heard the thing about um he also came out come out and said recently they had to um adr all every every single line of dialogue from attack of the clones because they were using mm. these new cameras that were so loud that every line from attack of the clones is 80 yard oh wow so they did it in bane's voice <laughs> 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 all right let's let's keep it let's uh You're let's keep it moving i think we're, we're about to hit a couple that we're going to be putting <laughs> haven't seen has have any of us seen in its entirety star wars clone wars the animated series no Wait, wait, no. The 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 movie, yes. The the movie or the and or the show, because that's right. What you're looking at first is the movie, and at the very end is the show. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. The show, the show, the show. The show. No, the show. Not no. its entirety, okay. but I've seen a lot of it. Okay, so we're putting haven't seen uh the the movie. Well, the Star movie Wars. I've seen. The movie okay, I saw. The movie. Where do you put I, that? Oof, D trending F. It's really bad. Maybe even F. It's really bad. Is it just called Star Wars Clone Wars? The movie? Yes. And it's okay. it's it's actually a couple of episodes of the Clone Wars strung together that they threw into theaters. And it involves re say, rescuing Jabba. So oh, you've seen it. Sean, you've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to say okay. D also. You're, you're right. You're, you're right. It, it's not good. Okay. And, uh, and 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 Kevin, there there are multiple fart jokes. <laughs> multiple, <laughs> multiple Star Wars fart jokes. Even I didn't see. like Jar Jar Binks' fart joke and, and Phantom, and that's saying something. Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. Oof. But, okay, but I would, not to backtrack us, when you and I went and saw it in theaters, we probably giggled. Oh, oh yeah. Oh no, I still laugh and at I it. And I think that that's gotta mean something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. But I mean, like, there's good fart humor and bad fart humor. It's just bad fart humor. All right. All right. So for the Clone Wars, you both Clone put D. Wars, is that right? D. Yeah, I would say, I'd D. say it's a yeah. D. Yeah. D. All right. And we will keep it moving with uh, Star Wars Rebels. Has anyone seen Star Wars mm-hmm. Rebels? I've seen a couple I have episodes. Seen Rebels in its entirety. Oh, okay. You have beautiful. Seen, yeah, because oh, I watched it with the boys. It's an A. Wow. Ooh, it, I've heard it's it great. It is. It is. Um, after being detached from star wars for a long time because i didn't care for the prequels um and i didn't get invested in the clone wars when we started watching rebels i was blown away by how close to the tone of the original trilogy it felt wow it was um and what i loved about it was it was all new characters that were part of the rebellion and pulling off these missions to essentially slow the uh progress of the empire and it just had that sort of scrappy, you know, we're, uh, we're going to do everything we can with the little bit that we have uh, in order to succeed on these missions. And it had really fascinating character. The, the youngest character was this kid, Ezra, who they thought was force positive um, and him getting trained by. Uh, Freddie. Do they Prince call Jr. it force positive or they call it force named- sensitive? Or sensitive? Or sensitive, maybe. Yeah, for sensitive. It could be wrong. Um, it's just great. It was really great, and it's and it really took on uh, some really interesting dramatic twists as it progressed uh, with Ezra's character flirting with the dark side. Um, it, this is this was Dave Filoni essentially, you know, coming on board and 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 expressing how much he'd learned from Lucas essentially, uh, and so it it revived my interest and, and love for. Uh, Star Wars and I I dug it because the boys dug it too but I was trying to explain to them like you guys don't really <laughs> realize how good this is sort of thing um and so I'm I'm super on board with that I would absolutely give Rebel Center. That's it. fantastic. I love that. Love hearing it's, that. It's great. While it's we're really here great. I will say watching Obi-Wan has me wanting to finally go back and watch the Clone Wars series just mm-hmm. because I know people love those and yep. they kind of stand mm-hmm. by the storytelling about like yeah. s- those adventures that they go on it has me really wanting to see more um well i, I one thing i have more. been told about the clone wars is that um you know for for any see, you know show that that goes that long there are episodes you need to see and there are episodes yeah. you don't need to see and yeah. a friend of the sh- friend of the show chase cusack went through it and actually compiled a list for me basically of like here are the ones you need to you actually need to see in order to have context for a lot of the other stuff that has shown up later and That's kind of, cool. I'd say cut the show down by half. So if you guys really get interested in it, I'm sure, um, I'm sure that that you list could I, be, look, could be obtained. The one thing I can't get over with star Wars animation is, is it all looks the same. Mm-hmm. Like it's that sort of characters. who look it's, like they it's were probably the same carved um, out of wood studio. Um, I would imagine. Right. I guess, but I wish there was a little variety to it. Cause even yeah. when like bad batch came around, and I was like, oh, I might give this a try. And then I turned it on and it looks exactly like the Clone Wars animation did you watch, and Rebels animation. And I never I never finished it. And it's not on this list. Um, did you ever watch Star Wars Visions, which was a cool little concept? Uh, I started it and couldn't get through it. I, oh, okay. I, I think I watched one or two of them. Well, that answers your plea because they gave it was things. I forget how many episodes it is, but each episode is a different animation studio. Um, I think okay. they're all in Japan, like it's anime style. OK, um, and they're like non they're they're not not canon um uh, but they they all sort of get their own style and it's very like anime storytelling okay. um i haven't finished it but i know people people who are into that style of animation have have really liked it let's keep it moving with uh 2015's episode seven the force awakens that's an a for me it's an a it's an a a trending S for me, actually. I love Force wow. Awakens. I think it's an S. It's, I mean, it's just I, a new hope, so that's a weird... No, I'm just kidding. I think <laughs> Force Awakens... <laughs> Force Awakens is better than New Hope. Exactly. Actually, I, really I'm not. actually okay with an... I'm okay with an S on this one, to be honest with you. Uh, it's an A for me. It's an A for me. It's an A for me. And Sean, what did you say, A? I said S um, because... So good. It w- To me, it felt awesome. like... A New um, Hope, you're right, it did. It felt exactly Han, like Han's hope. death. First of all, did, did Han Solo die in New Hope? I don't remember that. Han's death in Force Awakens is one of my favorite Star Wars well, scenes. No, that, and one that, of the... It's Obi-Wan's death, essentially. He he gets the Obi-Wan's death moment. But it it it, it took what, what I thought the prequels should have done, and this is going to speak a little bit to Kevin's um, argument as well, too. It handed the Star Wars mythology to a good director. 
and yeah. and JJ directs the hell out of it, and it's super exciting. He's and it's he's not one just for nostalgia. two in Star Wars, though. So I don't know. Can you? Really... He is. Nope. Yes, he is. But well, his one is great. His one is really great. His so. rise experience is kind of like you could argue that's kind of a little bit like Fincher's we, Alien Three. But we but disagree we'll that later. We disagree. It got thrown yeah. on him. It, it yeah. got thrown on him. Um, I, I'd say S, but if you guys want to argue A, well, it I, has I'm to be A. But according to those rules, because it's a tie. Oh, okay, and gotcha. the, the tie goes to the A in this from S to A. Just because S has to, we feel like S has to be, you know, overwhelmingly yeah. S. A, a trending S. I love. Okay. I, I would rather watch Force Awakens than New Hope. That's just me. I do love. I do love Force Awakens, and oh. I, I I poke fun at it pulling. You know, I've I've talked about it before. I think it was absolutely necessary that it pulled the um all the sort of beats and matched exactly what happens in a new hope with what happens in that film because i felt it was it was making a statement to the audience that we're we're returning you to form um however i also felt like it was a great time to move away from that because they made that statement and we'll get to that i would argue uh, moment. Uh, that force awakens <laughs> has the greatest final shot of any star wars movie What's the final yes. shot of, of final shot? Ray holding out the lightsaber to Luke? Yeah, mm, mm-hmm. it's the, the greatest also, final shot of any Star Wars movie. The Kylo Ren snow fight, oh, the fantastic. Han Solo's death, the opening scene, Max von Sydow. Uh, I thought Ray's theme is unbelievable. One of my favorite John Williams yeah. scores it's ever. Great. Uh, it is such a damn good movie, and, and I, 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 I was thro- so blown away by that film and i you know i i don't know that's why that's why i'm a trending s and i i know people you know the new hope people are going to argue that new hope is better i prefer force awakens i will watch sure, force I'm awakens gonna, any day of the week over new hope personally i'm gonna argue that um the lightsaber flying through the air and landing in ray's hand oh would be the best star wars moment ever if not for um luke i'm your father like that i mean that has to be one and i think ray catching the lightsaber is two Force Awakens is so good. Everyone's Let's, Oscar Isaac. I mean, the Poe <laughs> character. I mean, that movie is amazing. It's great. Man. It's great. It's, we, it's, oh, it's terrific. We still have a number of these to get through. So let's keep chugging along with Rogue One, a Star Wars story. This will be interesting. I so, yeah, I'm I, in this moment. I am like, I'm I. Go ahead. I think it's here's, here's here's my only argument. And I'll, I'll let, I want Jake to chime in, too. I think the film itself is a B. But the ending scene with Vader in the hallway, it, it, it's top five Star Wars scenes of all time. Um, so it's, it's a hard one for me because I, I feel like Rogue, Rogue One pulls the greatest trick ever in, in movies. Like it, it gives you a movie that's good. And then all of a sudden you walk out after seeing one of the greatest Star Wars scenes of all time. And I think you leave on a high. So that movie feels well, better than it is. Um, I would say B uh, trending A, but that that scene is so nah, good. Dude, 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 you're, I, wanna, I feel like you're sleeping. on. I'm sorry, Sean. I want to well, I want to give it some credit for for doing this. Uh, it was one of the first Star Wars movies in a super long time that used new characters. Uh, which I don't I don't think it gets enough credit for super interesting yeah. new characters. Right. I really loved the introduction to the new characters, um, yeah. especially uh, Donnie Yen's character, uh, the blind Jedi. He's Jedi, isn't he? Does he officially qualify uh, as a Jedi? I don't know. It's, he, I, just, he, I don't think he's a Jedi. Yeah, he seems to practice Jedi techniques, but without actually okay. being a Jedi is my. Was, okay, isn't, he my from, isn't he from like a planet where there's like a temple or something like that? I need to rewatch Rogue One, but I forget. Yeah, he's he has a bit more sensitivity. I was skipping through some scenes from Rogue One recently. I didn't I didn't watch it in its entirety, but I watched most of the back half of it. Um, And the action sequences are fantastic. Uh, The the way all the X-Wing fighters mobilize and attack the beaches and the third act is great. Third act is terrific. Kevin's right with the Darth Vader scene. It's great. Um, I think it's I think it's all good enough to become an A, but. I don't know yeah, what Jake I, is on. I don't know where Jake is on Rogue One at all. I think it's definitely an A. I think the stuff. I think it's. I think Rogue One features the best actual space battles of any of the Star Wars movies. I mean, we you, you literally get a ship that decides that they're going to run a kamikaze into a star destroyer, and that the star destroyer crashes into that the the barrier around the planet. Like you see things mm-hmm. like the physics of how all the space battles work. Is incredible and and the imagery of the on the ground battles like just the the you know there we make so so many jokes about how like Star Wars can't get away from Tatooine but don't forget like the imagery like all the marketing material around Rogue One 
was the beaches the the, and the, the yeah. images mm. of the walkers and the stormtroopers on these tropical beaches was such a yep. cool unique and so like that's cool. what that's what i still had a ton of hope in star wars because it really felt like we were getting i remember just looking at that going like man star wars on a beach like that's yeah, awesome yeah, yeah. i don't understand that's why they <laughs> yeah um so i i think a lot i think a lot of it's fantastic and i think the it the I, it, kevin you talk about like a trick that it pulls i think the greatest trick it pulls is convincing us of a of a mistake in star wars was the plan all along this idea of mm. like why would the death star have a small hole in it that if you shoot so it blows up like but now the fact that they've retconned it which retcon is not always a bad it's always used in such a negative way it can be used in a really smart way and this mm-hmm. idea that it was actually a sneak attack by uh, uh a, a secret member member of the rebel alliance i think is just brilliant and honestly the like did you ever think that you would ever see a star wars movie that had the balls to kill off everyone at the end of the movie yeah like that true. was that was because like there was no other other than i was afraid it was going to pull the disney way of doing it and go well they had to go into hiding and that's why we've never heard of any yeah, of these yeah, people yeah. but they straight yeah. up went nope they're dead and that's why you've never heard of them um, also uh ben Mendelssohn is incredible yeah. incredible yeah. incredible ben so, i'm cool so i'm cool with an a, a on this yeah I'm yeah. I'm also I'm a trending S. I love this movie. Yeah. yeah. Um Jake, you said A. Sean, you yeah. said A. A. And then Kev, you're at a B trending A. You said? No, yeah, I'll go A. I'm good. I'm gonna I'm good on A. Like? The, the, I think the Vader scene the alone. Vader, yeah. I, I I think that Vader scene is like one of my favorite Star Wars scenes of all time. Also, I mean Rogue Rogue One is sen- is essentially a you know a, a multi million dollar fan fiction, yeah, which is <laughs> so, great, like, yeah, which, yeah. Is, which is fine. I mean, I'm cool with that, but it is yeah. it is like a fan who made it from the Star Wars films and was like, you know, how cool would this be if we did this? And I'm cool. And with I'm that. gonna I'm it gonna works. argue that Star Wars needs to do more movies like that. Just yeah. so stand. I was gonna say solo, you know, movies I, standalone adventures, you know, yeah. that that aren't connected to much larger pictures and projects. I would argue. Um, not to like underscore or undercut your point, Kev, but I would argue, especially now that George Lucas isn't involved, the cool thing about Star Wars is every single one of them now is a fan fiction. Like, sure. like, like the Mandalorian yeah. is just John Favreau fan fiction. You know, right. like, like yeah. it's just that's what we're getting is people who fell in love with this, continuing yeah. to explore it, which I think is is a beautiful thing in its own right. I do think Mandalorian is better than Rogue One, the like the series. Yeah. But, well, there's more time, yeah. more time with that. They're different, yeah. different beasts, but. We'll get to Mandalorian, uh, but right now we're going to move on to episode eight, The Last Jedi, <laughs> which, which, you know, I feel like we're going to be pretty simple. We know where we're at. We've had this argument. If you're new to the show, go find our Last Jedi review. It's uh, it's it's pretty heated, um, as is The Rise of Skywalker, which we'll get to later. But but let's who, who wants to go first where they where they put The Last Jedi? Let's say C. C? Wow, that's higher than I thought you were going to put it. I would also um, say C, actually. C, okay. Um, I would be willing to go B. Okay. But I can't go any lower than B. Can't go any lower than B? I'm going to have to do a little bit of defending. It's, it's a fucking hard-ass A for me, boys. It is an A. It is one of my favorite Star Wars movies ever. I think... I've said this before, and so I'll try to summarize this for anyone who's listening to this again. I think it's one of the best Star Wars movies ever made. Um, it has its problems. It has some of the humor doesn't work. Um, and that's why it's not an S. But I think that in that I love The Force Awakens for just it's just raw, you know, summer blockbuster style. It's incredibly engaging. Um, and it was reintroducing the audience to what Star Wars was and, and what it what fans want it to be. I felt like The Last Jedi took that and said, OK, now we're going to now it's going to grow up. Now we're going to sit, you know, take the theme of. Um, you know, because what Star Wars really says is you come from nowhere, but maybe you're secretly a part of something like maybe you're secretly a part of the superior family. And what The Last Jedi does is says what Star Wars really has wanted to say all along, which is it doesn't matter where you're from. You can influence the world around you. You can save the world. You can save the galaxy. You can make the world a better place. Um, you can be something, which I think is what Star Wars has always wanted to say. And to me, The Last Jedi is the first one that really, well, I guess maybe Rogue One kind of in a way. But first one that really takes the Skywalker saga and says what Star Wars has wanted to say all along. Um, and I love that about that. And so for me, it is a, 
it is an A. I, I love that movie very much, even though in spite of its problems. I, I think, um, I mean, in, in a weird way, Gabe, even though I'm giving it a C, I feel like we're much more on the same page yeah. than you think, because I, I agree with you. I like what Last Jedi has to say, like the, right. it's its messages, what it says about Luke Skywalker, what it says about our fascination with heroes and our ability to we, we need to be able to accept that these heroes that we worship growing up are inherently flawed people i i and i i love this whole idea of the last shot with like the the, the kid you know like kind of looking up into the stars and this random kid potentially being you know like you know a, a jedi in the making i mm-hmm. just don't like how it says it sure so i love the themes i just think some of the creative choices yeah were were, were poorly done but there are yeah, some so, i mean yeah. i will say there are some great images the, in there. oh the oh, uh here's, yeah when she crashes like, the ship yeah. uh, at light speed um, um, yeah, the, I was going to make an argument. The whole fight shot. scene with Snoke is amazing. I mean, oh. obviously, there's there's so many great moments in that movie. Yeah. The problem the Snoke is, fight scene. Yeah. The uh, the what's the final planet that they filmed? The, oh yeah, the, yeah, the, the sort of like salt, salt yeah. flats. Yeah, with the, the, the red, like that's such a like beautiful like like, like yeah, like the dragging of the salt and then it picks up the red. It's just it it's is one gorgeous. of the most gorgeous yeah. Star Wars films. And again, sorry, Sean, I want you to continue if you do. That's another thing I love about the Last Jedi is it is it takes. Um, in the way that the Force Awakens took a new hope and then it sort of like took that blueprint and then it shuffled some stuff around, but it, it took those beats and gave them new characters and, and made it feel a little fresh, but it's very much that that. Um The Last Jedi does that with uh Empire. Like that that planet is just Hoth. Like mm-hmm. that, like but it but it I think thematically, even in its visuals, it's showing how it's it's taking that and adjusting it and growing it up and turning it into something else. Um, because that sort of throughout that there are those those scenes that reflect what happens um, in Empire, which I which I love, and, and that scene in particular, like those salt flats, are very much very much a Hoth style battle mm-hmm. and a Hoth scene um, that he turns into something else, which I thought was very clever. But. I said this before, but my biggest problem with Last Jedi is that, I, and again, this is an opinion. I feel that Ryan Johnson knows we're watching a Star Wars movie and is going, you know what? You think you know this? Let me go ahead and show you the other way of how it's going to be. And I have no problem with changing things and subverting expectations. But to me, when a movie is to me feels like it's aware of its expectations and and is subverting them just to subvert them, I find that to be problematic. Um, and, and I'm not saying that Ryan was Johnson was like, Oh, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to throw everyone off, but throwing that lightsaber over his shoulder, I think is one of the worst moments in star Wars history. I think it's an awful moment. I don't think it makes any sense. And I get that. What Gabe is saying is like, you know, the character growing up and what, where Luke would be at this point in his life. But it, it is, it is the complete and utter, epitome of somebody subverting your expectations because everybody was waiting for that moment. The end of Force Awakens set up this beautiful moment. And I'm not saying it had to go the way we all wanted it to go. I'm not saying that's how movies are, but that right. felt like an S- a Saturday Night Live sketch. Like I, I was waiting for like that would have been like Mark Hamill on SNL hosting and then they do a bit about what's going to happen in Last Jedi. Like that scene is so frustrating and just I, I just don't understand wh- how they thought that was a good idea i, re- I yeah. just don't and, and then the whole casino the casino sequence is awful well, yeah the the yeah. the, 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 the entire the ship sequence that whole sequence with leia and and laura dern that that whole sequence is awful um uh, uh I, there, there's there are some really really bad star wars scenes in this movie that really are canon and completely change in my personal opinion what i felt luke was supposed to do or what luke's journey would be well, on and i'm not saying i'm not saying it has to be exactly what you yeah, want as an audience i, I want to push back on that. that way is pretty crazy i want to push back on that in a couple and jake ways. agrees with one, me i know he does one in one way i think one i think it's interesting because i think that shows the difference in the way you and i look at it and when you know in our opinion sure towards, you it strikes you one way because you see it as like a conscious subversion where for me those same things i look at taking star Wars and he know him, he, him knowing what star Wars truly is and trying to, and trying to grow it rather than just give it to us. But again. that's a, that's a side movie, but hang like, on, no, you're, I, you're in the middle me, of, the, of the, of the sky. I, I disagree. But hang on. Let me finish my second point though. That's my first point. I, I think that this is him evolving the story. And my second point, which is uh, I've said to you and I say to anyone that feels similarly, cause you're not alone in that. This was not the end of the Skywalker saga. This was the middle chapter. And not only that, it was the beginning of the middle chapter. 
Luke was supposed to be defeated. Luke was supposed to not sure. want that lightsaber. And I agree that tonally the humor is not handled well in the movie. Like that's my, that's my, probably my biggest right. gripe because if he, yes, him throwing it over his shoulder is a little cartoony. If he took it and he just threw it, he dropped it on the ground. Right. Yes. Took that, it and that's, broke it. that's what I would have right. loved to have seen. That's right. what I, I agree. to see. You take yeah. it and like break it or smash it or like, I agree. or, I agree. or something totally, like that. Totally, emotionally. Totally yeah. it's very yeah. wrong, but I don't disagree with the character being there because it's the middle it's a chapter. Scene. That. Which goes it's, back to my like, I, I like what it has to say. I just don't like the way that it says it. Right. Yeah. It, it's, it's really comes down to like, I understand that Luke would be in that sequence frustrated and, 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 and you know, wherever he is mentally it's right. the like jake said it's the handling of it, it there could have been there were so many other things you are back laser to her. focused on that scene though you no like, but you, i'm telling but that, but that scene, scene is such a microcosm that, example it's indicative of, of, yeah, of yeah, the yeah. way it's, a lot of the humor works i would yeah. say that, that like that, is, that humor uh, follows it through that scene's a big deal man that that is a yeah. big deal we waited two years for that scene but like, larger I, picture no matter, yeah but larger but picture i, I don't yeah. disagree with that's where the story should have been and i wish we'll get to this when we get to rise because again we, we kind of we flip if you're new here we flip <laughs> but um yeah i just i felt like it it promised it had so much promise for where star wars could have went with that yeah um, I, I feel like you could honestly probably take 95 percent of the last jedi script and just give it to a different director who would make di- like different choices on how to handle it but Ryan and it could have been fantastic. I've, I say I've said this before. I've seen Ryan Johnson's movies. The man knows how to handle tone. The man knows how to yeah, handle yeah, humor. Great. I I call shenanigans. I call studio shenanigans across the board with the with the sequel series, the sequel trilogy. It, I mean, you're you're so right because you just, when, I, when I see the humor in Star Wars, it's not even Ryan Johnson humor. It's just mm. humor thrown in yeah. to to change the tone of the movie yeah. in, in the middle of a beat. Like it's just it's, it's not Ryan Johnson to me. I could be wrong, but someone who loves so, his yeah. films it just doesn't seem like him so no. um uh, i want to weigh i want to weigh in go ahead please um i think i think that this movie gets hurt because because it's the middle part of a story and i really wish that ryan johnson had an opportunity to do some of the really exciting things that he does in the star wars universe yeah. detached from from the larger picture exactly um, because I love uh, I love so many of the things that he brings up um, in terms of Star Wars in general uh, and the idea of the Jedi. And mm. like Gabe was saying, you know, um, that, that you don't have to come from someplace, you know, which when we get to rise and making her making Rhea Palpatine is, you know, it, it's completely negating. and And it speaks to the lack of a overall plan that Lucasfilm had, you know, in terms of like, I, I can't wrap my brain Which is around unforgivable. the fact that, yeah, I can't wrap my brain around the fact that they handed one chapter to JJ and said, you do this and then handed another chapter to Ryan and said, <laughs> do whatever you want. It doesn't matter if they match up because they completely, they just contradict yeah. each other in, in pivotal ways. Yeah, you almost, you then, almost can't blame Ryan Johnson. You are like, 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 you just wanted to, so, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I love, I love what he does. I honestly love what he does in the movie. And, and I just, it, it's, it's hurt because it's part of a larger story. And so it damages the larger story in general. Um, but it has, a, it has a bunch of issues that, that make me make it a B. Um, because, you know, little things, um, Canto, Canto bites a bad detour. Like it's a, it's a relatively, you know, but uh, it's a big one. It's, it's a, a really big, big. Really I mean, really and also the, 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 the basis of the plot is a, it's a chase. It's one ship trying to hold out while another ship is chasing them. Exactly. And then that's that's what the entirety of the plot is. I also right. don't understand. I don't get why Luke die. I don't understand why Luke dies if he's force projected himself uh, far away to do the fight. Like. How come he can't sur- um, survive where he I, is? I forget what it is. Is actually this was interesting. I think this was a part of this because I saw this get called out whenever it was coming out, and someone was like, they were trying to tear down Ryan Johnson for something, and he pulled out a book and was yeah, like, actually, yeah. he's like, actually, this is a thing yeah. that happened in a book that is 
that is a part of the canon. Yes. I just oh, used this, and people yeah. were like, "Oh, so like, he knows so like he like he dusted what he's off an about. old Star Wars encyclopedia from like yeah, the like, 80s this, or something." People were like, "This isn't this isn't really Star yeah. Wars," and he was like, "This is actually deep cut, yeah, it's, seventh it's, level it's Star Wars." Basically, you know, I, I my understanding of, of what he did in that moment is basically like the final moments of running his your life third, force. yeah, and you're like running your third marathon in a row, and it's the final oh, moment of where, where you just collapse yeah. on the ground. That's so right. I think, and you know what? That actually speaks a lot too, because I don't think I think people give Ryan a lot of shit saying that he ruined Star Wars. When in fact, I think he has a deeper love for Star Wars oh, than more 100%. people give him credit for. Oh, there's no, there's no question he doesn't he doesn't love Star Wars. I just think yeah. it's it, it's really when you're eight films into a storyline to subvert that much and to change that much tonally. It, it, it just stands out like like, like it, had Ryan stepped in and not done Last Jedi and done his own film like on the side. We wouldn't be having these arguments. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Solo would have been great, too, because that was it, it wasn't. I mean, while Solo still relies with in the world of the Skywalker storyline, it's just. Oh, God, we haven't even gotten right. a Solo yet. That yeah. puts <laughs> us. Um, so we have an A, a B and two C's. So that puts yeah. that at a B. Wait, um, how does that a B? I'm confused. I have an A. I put it at an A. If it oh, was right. if it was a B and a two B's and a C, we'd be in a Wait, weird tie. A, but B, C, C, doesn't that makes it a B? Okay. Makes yeah, it a right. B yeah. because well, one I'm, of the C's. I, I can, I can sleep at night with that being. I can I can sleep at night with that being a B. I think that's a beautiful yeah. shot. It is beautifully um, shot. It's all right, uh, with that, we are going to take another quick break. Oh dear we'll God! Be back to continue this <laughs> segment that's taking forever. Um, uh, but yeah, we'll see you on the other side. Continuing this tier list, we're on the we're on the tail end, folks. All right, and we are back, and we're going to pick right back up with Star Wars Resistance, which I don't think any of us have seen. I've not. I've have not, not seen have not. Star Wars Resistance. I think that's more of wasn't it like a Disney XD or something like that. I think it was a much younger audience. I could be wrong. Sounds right. Um, again, sound off in the comments with how wrong we are. Well, I appreciate the engagement either way. Just be kind. Um, and then that brings us to uh, uh, Solo, a Star Wars story, which is not not our most controversial film, but some of us like it more than others. Um, That's a C. It's a C. C? Jake, it's where a, do you put it? It's a B for me. I think there's a lot of really fun stuff to be had. I think it's beautifully shot. Um, I think Alden is fantastic. I think Donald Glover is fantastic. I think their performances are great. Um, I think there's just some really great action sequences. Um, yes, I know for every solo name scene that we joke about a lot, but there is some cool origin stuff in there that I think yeah. does give some texture and some context to a lot of really cool aspects of Star Wars. So for me, it is is a very fun, enjoyable B. It'll always I just, be uh, I, I put it at C as well. Um but I, I could see it's it, it's a C where like on a if I were to rewatch this, you know, and or at the right time, I could see myself floating between a B and a C because there is a lot to really like about it. I think Alden Ehrenreich uh, you know, he kind of got thrown under the bus in that in that um, interview or whatever about recasting our uh, legacy characters. But yeah, I thought was he was mean. fantastic, like as good as it gets. I think um, I, I enjoyed him in the role. Mm -hmm. I also enjoyed I Donald just... Glover in the role. Um, it, this movie will always be disappointing, not with anything that it does, but the fact that it'll it'll have that like, oh, it had the behind the scenes, you know, it got picked up by a new director midway through and and uh, that whole thing will always be disappointing. There will always be that question of like what could have been, um, which is an unfortunate that doesn't 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 change my score. I, I think it's a C because of the movie, but I always find that a, a disappointing. Yeah, part at of the this. end of the day, there's no getting around the fact that it's just it's it's a mediocre movie. It has good yeah. elements um, and it has really bland elements. It's not a You're it's a not a mediocre movie. It's it, not a Ron, Ron Howard. Howard. It's not a Ron Howard original. It's a Ron Howard a uh, uh, gun for hire you know like when ron howard is a gun for hire he puts in a puts in a good movie like it'll give you a good movie if ron howard is in love with a story and he is fighting for it he will yeah. give you one of the best movies you've ever seen you know like it's ron howard is just a good director see when i think of ron he howard gun for hire gun for hire i think of like the da vinci code trilogy solo is infinitely better than all the da vinci code movies but he's quite literally a gun for hire in this like yeah I mean, the, they had to fill in somebody and they were like they should have given it to bryce dallas howard is what they should have done She's really cutting her teeth with these Mandalorian episodes. She's yeah, amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. She's awesome. Yeah. Is she uh is she got a feature yet? No. Is she do for a feature yet? Oh, it's coming. I think they I, just I, announced yeah. Mandalorian season three she's yeah. filming. For sure. Is she? Her I, th I think it's gonna be not too long or we're gonna be talking about, hey, remember that time that she was an actress? 
because I think she's just yeah. going to be. I think she's just going to be like in the same way that we talk about like Rob Reiner and we talk about Ron Howard. Like I think it's going to be that. Like hey, remember that she time took, when like um, we used to talk to her for acting? Didn't she? Ta- didn't she take a long break to like have a family or something like that? Like didn't she? I could totally see her take, doing the similar where she's like, I'm not totally attached to acting. I I just want to make films. I think you're right. But you're um, great. yeah, she's fantastic. And that brings us to the Rise of Skywalker. Um, which is kind of just the inverse conversation of um, <laughs> of the Last Jedi, but mm-hmm. but where 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 are we even at with- even to the point where like I would almost inverse uh, my argument on Last Jedi is that like with Rise of Skywalker, I don't particularly like what it has to say, <laughs> but I like, <laughs> I like how like it's done. Happens. I like. Yeah. I think it's like really beautifully shot, and I think like uh, I mean I'm sorry. Like you can t- you talk to me all day long about how much you don't like this movie. There is a lightsaber fight scene on the remnants yeah. of the Death Star in a rainstorm. Yep. Like that yeah. is awesome, and you'll never yeah. convince me that's not awesome. Yeah, I'm going B on this. Yeah, I'm I going like B as well. I'm also going B. I'm with you, Kev. Mm. Oh, I oh. also I I argue is, this is a this is a hot take. I think the Palpatine element has become the martha thing for bbs oh interesting um, comparison i yeah, love I the that. martha moment in bbs I love the martha moment too i don't particularly love the palpatine element but i don't mind it but yep. i think that that's become the martha aspect of star wars like I, that I, is like it, it just, I just feel like pe- that's the thing that people go to and go i yeah. hated that like but here's the I'm thing like, i like that he's Here, back i just don't like that she's a palpatine was, here's right, one element it, about it if when that reveal the martha happened moment. if when that reveal happened there was enough that threaded it back through the other two yeah where we were like, oh, that's where they were going this whole time. Oh, damn. But instead, it really just felt like they kind of wrote it the night before. You well, know, and which the, I think I think there was an interview with her where she even said like they were on set and she asked Abrams, like, have you figured out who my parents are yet? And they're like, ah, not yet. <laughs> so I mean, now, so you're so you're not grand. wrong. Granted, that did, that is exactly. I mean, everyone knows this now. These these weren't planned, which is ridiculous. It should have been planned. But at the same time, that Palpatine moment doesn't bother me as much as it bothers a lot of people. I mean, I don't think it's a great idea, but I think I, I, I it didn't. I was I walked out of that movie going, man, that was fun. I, I, and I also we are also very inside baseball. Like Abrams picking that up and just kind of crossing the finish line with it. I think he did a really solid job with what he had, uh, especially coming off the heels of Last Jedi and whatever you think of Last Jedi, regardless of you love it or not. That movie did shake things up. We can all agree upon that. Um, and for a filmmaker like Abrams to step back into a world that he jump started with Force Awakens, got shooken up, shaken up in Last Jedi and then to cross it to the finish line. I yeah. think he did a really so, solid job. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, you could argue really that well like, he's as much a gun for hire on, on this one like as Howard. Howard was for Solo. Yeah. Sean, it, 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 yeah. Sean where, where do you put it? It's a D for me, dog. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, wow. It's a D. It's a D. Wow. See, now, see, now, now, see, now, here's the thing. Jake and I played nice on Last Jedi. We I were know. okay. With, we were okay in that beat. No, no. But, but, but Jake and I, I think Jake and I both agreed last night as a C. I don't know. I'm not trying yeah. to speak for Jake. Yeah. But I think that we were like, you know what? I can get, I get its merits. I get certain things about it. And we all were like, okay, A, B, C, C, whatever. Sure. Well, Skywalker's not a D, man. That is absurd. It, 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 I would, yeah, if you said C, absolutely if, not a D. If, if you said you, C, you I'd cannot, be like, yeah. I, expect, okay, I expected okay. it to yeah, land at C. So let me. You, okay, so hold on. Fine, let me let fine. me give my argument as to why I think that you're it's saying. A D. Wait, wait, hold on. Just to clarify, you're saying Skywalker is as bad as Attack of the Clones. Just to clarify, for different reasons. <sighs> you think it's you, wait? You, you think Attack of the Clones? I personally think Attack of the Clones is worse than the Rise of Skywalker, but I don't way think they're worse. Well, again, again we, we, we're not comparing to other things. We're not list, comparing it that way. Is average. I don't is think average. Rise of Skywalker has enough good things going for it to make it a C. Let me put it that way. But Sean, they fly I think now. It's absurd. Oh man, that, that scene is is really bad. It's, it's, not, scene it's really, really it's a really good you've scene. Taken, you've taken that line really and just made it. That is that is actually a really fun change scene i um, agree with you we, we joke about that line yes. i actually like that okay, scene hold a lot. on give me a I chance to go give me yeah, a chance let him, to let him talk let him talk 
the the entire movie even with its it, with um scenes that Jake enjoys um and you know th- there are cool scenes in the movie but they're not stitched together in any way that works the, there's no storyline pulling you through the rise of skywalker that convinces me that the entire thing wasn't just constructed um in, in a reaction it's the reality then what's, of the what's movie. What's Last Jedi then? It's not a reaction though. I, I it think, is Last Jedi no, is a reaction. Yeah, they're they're not a reaction. No, it's they're both uh, reactions. Uh, I think he's no, hang on, hang on. Skywalker is a reaction to the fans. Uh, st- but but I think it's unfair to give the Last Jedi the same the same statement when it's when you can uh, again the way I look at it you're negating the way I look at it which I think is completely fair which is it's not it's it's not a reaction to the Force Awakens. He's taking the Force Awakens is just a new hope. The Force Awakens is nothing. It's just New Hope. It's very it's fun. Nothing. I love it. It's an A. I it love has it. Han Solo's death scene. It's one of the kept. That's a, it, nothing. Which it's a is huge just movie. which is just Obi Wan Kenobi's death scene. That's my point. It's nothing so what? new. No, okay, but my point is, it's nothing new. It is just Star Wars redone with new effects, and that's fine. I love it for what it mm-hmm. is. I don't disagree with that approach. The Last Jedi is not a reaction to that. The Last Jedi says, "What if we take that and now we now we let it grow? We do okay, something new." Okay, but we're new. moving. But we're on to Rise. But of hang Skywalker. on. But but then mm-hmm. now the point to this is. The Rise of Skywalker is just a reaction to people not liking that. Like, it's just that is a reaction. I don't think it's fair to say The Last Jedi is a reaction. I think it's it was trying to take a step in a different direction. Your point. I think JJ was just trying to I think JJ was trying to right the wrong. But that's not wrong. I I don't think it's fair to call it wrong. The drop in quality from Force Awakens to Rise of Skywalker is significant. Yeah, but I would argue it's Last Jedi's fault. (laughs) I really really would. It has nothing to do with The Rise of Skywalker. It doesn't matter. It's the same filmmaker. I think, are you, are you the, saying D? I, I want to say F, but the only thing oh keeping me from God. F. Oh my wait, God! Wait, 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 wait! I want to clarify. No. Wait, G- Gabe, are you saying that Rise of Skywalker is worse than Attack of the Clones? The only reason it's not, the only reason I'm going to give it a D, <laughs> is because you are correct that it has cool things. The 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 fight on the Death Star is awesome. The uh, when he gets the lightsaber behind his head, cool as shit. When they have like the virtual fight, like through the Force, like they're in two different places. Amazing! Like th- these are these are fans of Star Wars. Drivers who are taking... great. Everyone's great. They're all great through all three of them. My my point is, it's only redeeming quality for me above an F is that it has cool ideas that were unfortunately put in a really bad movie. But that, that doesn't. I don't think that, that, that deserves for, a D. But that was made for. Uh, but it was made for completely vapid reasons. None of it works for me. I don't like any of it. I don't the the Palpatine thing. I think is an absolute disgrace. Um, like I said, it completely negates it completely negates the beauty of of what they were where they were taking the Ray character. Um, so for me, it's a D. For me, it's absolutely a D. And like I said the, the only redeeming quality is that it does really cool stuff. Like it's I'm I'm upset that I have to watch that movie in order to see those cool things. <laughs> like that's that's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, I really I I can't tell you how much I hate man Ray as a palpitation. You guys said B. Yeah. I mean, this is a this is a galaxy that's supposed to be filled with, you know, enormous Wait. Uh, plot threads and potential. And, and she's the descendant of the villain from the first one. Like, it, it couldn't be more lazy. It couldn't yeah. be more disappointing. Uh, I never thought Jedi, I'd, I'd, I'd yeah. miss the Marvel tier days. <laughs> <laughs> this movie I, was I, made. I, it's geez. just it, there's nothing there's there's the movie was made for. Oh. There's no heart in it. Like, it's just. Yeah. It's it, just it, they read they they someone went to reddit.com and then they wrote a movie like that. If we if we were in the trading business, I would I would give a new hope and S to move Jedi to a C to move Skywalker to a B. I know we can't do that, but yeah. I would be OK with that. No, we have to be in honest. Terms of, we have to be honest. I I, I'm not trying to pull it down. I Like I said, I coming into today, I was like, do I have to defend giving it an F? I'm kind of thought I was going to give it an F. And then I think but you C guys mentioned the high. cool. It is. It absolutely Wait, is too high. But Last Jedi average. is a B. You're talking about too high. That <laughs> Last Jedi too low. should not is not a B at all. It's, all right, it's a let's, C. Uh, let's let's keep it moving. Um, <laughs> the Mandalorian. Just silent. Mandalorian. Oh, uh, that's, that's, that's an A. That's an A. That's an A. Right? Yeah. That's let's keep, there are Mando's there a. are S episodes. Agreed. Yeah. There are, but, there are, I, yeah. but there are also like C episodes. Let me know what you guys yeah. think of this. I feel like we need to do this with TV shows. The Marvel stuff has kind of been like one shots. We haven't really had the or you know we'll come back. season. When the the next Mandalorian season, when we review it, I figure we'll come back and we'll, oh, we'll see if it, fun. if it adjusts. Yeah. If we're Mando like, oh, this could, makes this Mando series. could go to an S. Yeah. It could. I mean, man, the Luke Skywalker scene in Mando 
And then, oh my god, that entire Ahsoka sequence in the forest. Yeah, yeah. dude, and I mean, all of yeah, Grogu, the second like, season, Grogu's the second a terrific season. season. Yeah. Man, Grogu Mando, is a terrific introduction uh, to the series. All right, Timothy uh, Oliphant. I mean, oh, I love dude, Mandalorian. Timothy Oliphant. It's great. Yeah. It's great. And I'm sorry we're, we're going through this quickly, but we have talked about Mandalorian recently, yeah, and yes. we'll continue to talk about it. But Mando we're, should we're not be that close to Last Jedi. But I <laughs> uh, the I Bad digress. Batch. Did Did anyone make it through the Bad Batch? I watched I Bad Batch, and um, you watched all of it. Yeah, I watched all of okay. it, and um, I'll be generous and say it's a C. C. Okay. Yeah, it's a C. All right. Uh, let us know in the comments if you've seen it. The rest of us have not. So send it's in your opinions. And, and Boba Fett. This will be an interesting one. Um, Boba Fett. Where do you guys want to see? I would say Boba Fett's a D. A D? Uh, yeah. B. And the I reason would I would be. say that is because, it, uh, Kevin, almost in the same way that, like, how you describe. Um, I'm going to say C. Uh, Rogue, Sorry, I'm Rogue place One this. and uh, the Darth Vader scene is how I feel about Boba Fett and those two episodes that are basically Mando. Like those episodes yeah. are fantastic, but that's not fair because it has nothing to do with Boba Fett. I thought the right. Boba Fett stuff was unbearably boring. It made me want to claw my eyes out. I never thought there would be a moment where a, there's a TV show about Boba Fett and I had to force <laughs> myself to sit down and watch it. Like I actually yeah. like, would, like I like I'm going to wake up early tomorrow morning. I watch Obi-Wan with Boba Fett. It would be like five or six days after. I think at one point I even got two episodes behind where I was like, oh, God, I got to sit down and watch Boba Fett. Like that's well, like that. That sh that should not be. I just thought it, it was unbearably boring. As cool as the character of Boba Fett is, I think this is unfortunately a situation where that character is cool because it's a side character. Like and I, I, I am I'm I have no problem building off of characters like but Mandalorian to me is like a great way to expand aspects of Star Wars. Boba right. Fett, I don't know. At the end of the day, I love Boba Fett in the trilogy in, in, in the Star Wars films, but I don't know that it warranted a series. And I get like nope. see here's the thing. Boba Fett's kind of like that thing like like it's like fandom. Everyone loves Boba yeah. Fett. Boba Fett's one of the right. one of the best characters in Star Wars. But it was it's it's almost like you take a good thing and then you and then you're and then you're just like saturating yourself with too much of it it's like it was i don't know it's, it's hard to explain but yeah, i think Boba I think Fett was mean. perfect as a side character i think it was it's a mashed potatoes on a steak dinner <laughs> you know what i mean i, it, it was the, I do it, like knowing what happened to him like i there, there are sure. elements of it that i like <clears throat> as far as like just seeing his arc but you know the, the biggest problem is the fact that the best parts of boba fett are a different Mando. guy in, in armor it's mandalorian yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, it's <laughs> yeah it's so this anyway, so that's, I, I am um, very happy with this. I'm very happy with this. List. I'm not upset with this list. Uh, there's, a, there, I, we, you know, because we average, it's a group score. That's kind of the fun of it. This is the real blend list, not any an, an individual list. Yeah. We're all disappointed or I, I think the only one, the honestly, the, the, the thing that gets me the most is a new hope. It's not being an S. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. The, like, I'm with that's you. the thing that's going to keep me up tonight. The other ones, but, but here's I, the thing. I expected us to but, be split but, on Solo and Rise but, and Last Jedi. But Empire is the masterpiece, and I, that, that's kind of why I'm looking at this list right now. And I, and I but know we have that, like 84 you know, I, I, Marvel masterpieces. Well, there's 25 of those movies. It's a different story. But yeah. in this situation, like I'm sorry, the fact that there's only one S in all of Star Wars kind of hurts my soul a, a little thing. bit. I, I think it's that's, not I totally think that's honest. But Jake, it's not, it's not totally thing. off. They're, like, there's, there's you and I think that there should be two. That's the yes. only difference. Yeah, you know which, what I mean? but, so <laughs> which means that we're 100 percent off. But, well, think about it for one second. If you looked at that list right now, if someone said to you, what is the best Star Wars movie ever made? You'd say Empire. people usually say everybody, Empire. everybody yes. would say Empire. Yeah. Um, I understand why A New Hope could be considered an S, but I do like the fact that we're just looking at one single film up there. And that is the best Star Wars film. It has the best lines. It has the best moments. It has the best action. It has let's, the best let's go back and do Marvel and just leave Infinity and War taking, at the top. But, but, okay, but I'm taking, okay the Marvel, taking the Marvel uh, tier list out of it, when we start moving forward, isn't the agreement that we're only going to have one S? Isn't well, we uh, that for directors. Be the deal? No, that's directors. So directors. I do like one S. It, I think it does make oh, it. Oh, sure. Now uh, after we do Marvel, we have one S. Well, no, no, don't get me wrong. You're talking about you're talking to somebody who thinks Winter Soldier and Infinity War and Civil right. War all belong on that tier. But I do think it's cool if we can like force ourselves to find the oh, one. Yeah. To wait till and we play Nolan, though, Kev. That's that's yeah. what we'll do for directors. Oh, so, yeah. so God, one and what one, one one Nolan S. S. One all, that's not one happening. I, I, I'm sick that day, guys. Sorry. <laughs> okay, fine. Well, we'll make the decision for you. <laughs> I'm going to pass the uh, hosting torch back to Sean oh. for this weekend movies. I, 
I think it was. A, I, I like that discussion. That was fun. I mean, and also you have to understand, people listening to the show, we're not. This is not planned. We're all going through this live as we talk about it. It's absolutely. You know, this is just you know a general discussion. I mean, it's an interesting thing. I do understand Jake's passion for episode four being an S, but yeah. I just I, I like our list. This week in movies, uh, coming limited is a Mark Rylance film called The Phantom of the Open, which none of us have had a chance to see. Clever name, though. I, I, I did interview him for that, and yeah. I got him. He was great, and I'll put it online eventually, but we talked about Spielberg and Nolan a lot, and Dunkirk Please and do. Bridges of Spies. And Bridges uh, Spies. Hulu, on behalf of uh, Pride Month, is dropping Fire Island uh, comedy. That um, I know Corey Chichizola on our staff saw and loved. Says it's his favorite thing he's seen. I, this year. I really want to see it. I haven't had it pitched to me. I and shout out either. to Bowen Yang, who I think is one of my favorite comedians right now. Um, nice. I love him on SNL. He's a big part of this film as well. I haven't seen it yet, uh, but I've heard, you know, again, it's but Bowen Yang. I just love him and I'll watch anything he's in. So I'll, I'll fire it up for sure. No pun That'll intended. Hulu Fire Island There's a horror film going to theaters called Watcher. But we want to skip ahead to the David Cronenberg film. Uh, that Jake got a chance to see that was at the Cannes Film Festival and has some big names attached to it uh, called Crimes of the Future. And Jake, you mentioned the other day you were going into a screening of this and then mm-hmm. went radio silent afterwards. And that has me a little bit worried. I mean, OK, to be fair, I, I think I went radio silent because I walked out to the news of Ray Liotta, um, which oh, kind of okay. just, okay. just shifted gotcha. my whole day. Um, gotcha. I did not love this, if I'm being honest with you. And I'm a, I'm a really big David Cronenberg fan. I love, you know, his recent work, History of Violence and, and um, you know, Eastern Promises. Um, I even loved uh, he did a movie um, with Robert Pattinson called Cosmopolis, which I really liked. Um, and obviously, The Fly is probably his masterpiece, but I love Video Drone. Video Drone. I, I love uh, it, uh, uh, Scanners, um, mm. Crash, his his crash. Um so I, I think it's, it's safe to say that I am a Cronenberg fan. And, and Sean, you, you use this line once and it's always stuck with me. And I always think it's fantastic. And now I rip it off far too often um, when you describe The Departed, because you describe The Departed as uh, it feels like someone trying to make a Martin Scorsese film. Mm-hmm. And uh, this feels like someone kind of trying to do David Cronenberg. You've got interesting. It's, it's got you've got a lot of the quintessential body horror elements um the idea is it's set uh, a little bit further into the future um human beings have evolved in a really weird way and that they no longer feel pain but they've also started growing organs that people don't quite know what they're used for mm-hmm. and uh vigo mortensen and leah sado uh from the bond films from the recent bond films are uh performance artists that use um the body and these extra organs in really dark macabre ways while people watch on. Um, mm. And then it, and then it just, it goes from there to say, to say <laughs> the least. Um, there are a lot of really interesting ideas that I, I chewed on um, afterward and, and still think about, but it's presented in, in a really, I mean, Cronenberg wrote this script 20 years ago and I really think it could have used another couple of passes because there are, just long stretches of exposition where, I mean, there are moments where, uh, you know, uh, Viggo Mortensen just just sits down to talk to people and it feels like it's an unloading of information that you got to keep track Mm -hmm. of. And I just felt like if you took all of these ideas and the story that it's trying to tell somewhere in there was something interesting and something fascinating, but with the final product of what we get just honestly, I mean, for a movie that is as gory and and, you know, like body horror horrific as as it is. And it's got all those quintessential, very bloody Cronenberg elements. I was far more bored than I felt like I should have been. I mean, I, I know leading into the film um, at the uh, at the film at the Cannes Film Festival, there are all these conversations. Of, oh, man, it's going to yield walkouts. Oh, my God, people aren't going to be able to handle it. They're going to be covering their eyes. And the only moment I thought about walking out is just because of how bored I was. Um, I feel like he's moved on from that body horror. It, it kind uh, of type of. I, yeah. I mean, like even, I mean, there are flashes of it. And I think mm-hmm. like in, in a history of violence, um, and, you know, there's like the, the moment where, you know, like Ed Harris gets, you know, the half his face blown off and, and even mm-hmm. like that, yeah, that bathroom scene in, in Eastern promises. Right. You know, it's come like, on. You ever, you ever see that naked John claude Van Damme roundhouse kick? So <laughs> that was pretty, I mean, that was so, I mean, uh, with Viggo Mortensen. So, yeah. So I think he's still, it's still in his roots, but yeah, this feels like, 
I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, there's a reason he wrote it 20 years ago and put it on a shelf. How um, are um, Leia and Kristen Stewart? Um, Vigo and Leia are very understated. It's my least favorite collaboration between V. This is now the third collaboration that he's done with Cronenberg. He did have Cronenberg in the film that he directed. So I guess technically you could say that's the fourth, but it's the third time he's been directed by Cronenberg. Um, he and Leia are more like share most of the screen time pair together mm -hmm. very Wait, understated fourth, for wasn't he in dangerous method i think he was in dangerous method with kira knightley oh is that cronenberg yeah okay yeah, sorry yeah. sorry forgive me i i didn't realize uh, that was cronenberg. I'm, I'm pretty sure um, vigo's in that uh yeah I think, yeah that uh, vigo's definitely in that i just didn't realize that, that was that that was cronenberg um yeah. so i mean it just doesn't i mean in fact cronenberg's son did a movie last year i think i'm right last year or the year before um that was uh far felt like far more of a of a good cronenberg movie um mm. but um at, at the end of the day just this this one didn't work for me which is a disappointment because i feel like we're we're not getting that many cronenberg movies these days all right jake mentioned he come out uh coming out of that screening and hearing the news about ray liotta which forced us to uh pivot our blend game well not forced us i mean we we wanted to uh pay tribute to the man uh, and and play yep. hashtag Ray Liotta blend as a result of this. And one of the things that we tend to do when somebody has a choice that is, you know, probably an obvious choice for all of us is to dis discard it. And so we took Goodfellas off the board, knowing that it's, um, you know, a, a masterpiece that he's a, a part of and is is largely considered great because he's so good mm -hmm. in it, uh, in addition to um, De Niro and Pesci and obviously the work of Martin Scorsese. So. Um, I went with that film off the board. Uh, I went with Copland and mm. I just think that Copland is uh, such a good film from um, Mangold, James Mangold. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah oh my James God. Mangold, early James Mangold um, that got a lot of credit for uh, Sylvester Stallone playing against type. But then I think um, that overshadowed the amount of really good work that was being done by everybody else in it, yeah. including Ray Liotta and Harvey Keitel. Um, and I think it speaks a lot to a really interesting concept um, that is really, really accurate based on a number of uh, fiction books that I've read, but also a lot of nonfiction books about how often um, off duty police officers uh, use their influence um, in the smaller towns that they live in, because it's mm -hmm. it's a little bit that phrase of. Um, don't eat where you shit kind of thing, you know, like they keep their business separate from their personal lives. But then when they're in their personal lives and they're back home, that they are um, being the the sort of power hungry, you know, and abusers um, that they think they're allowed to be because they're the law, you know, mm -hmm. essentially that they get away with a lot. Um, and that the more Stallone as the small town sheriff learns about the thing that these guys are doing and, and the way that they're um, abusing their powers, uh, he starts to stick his nose into it. And gets, you know, these characters played by Leota um, and um, and Kaitel, they look down on him because they figure they're the big city cops and he's a bit of the stooge. And mm -hmm. um, and and all of it is done so well because Mangold uh, is is a much better filmmaker than people knew at the time. You know, he was still relatively young and, and still sort of figuring out. Well, wasn't uh, that I, oh, I don't mean to divert it, but like, wasn't there at least they tried to make Oscar conversation for Stallone at that time. Like, wasn't this oh, sort of yeah. meant to be a Stallone Oscar vehicle? And did it, it uh, was it just not received or like what happened there? I don't remember exactly what happened. You're right. It absolutely was thought to be that much of a diversion for him, you know, away from, because by that point he was doing full on, you know, action films yeah. essentially. And this was way more of a, a smaller character drama essentially and i do know the way that they marketed it was there's like a gunfight you know towards mm -hmm. the end of the movie and i think that was the majority of the trailer mm -hmm. to make you feel like but it was like stallone put on weight uh he played a guy who was hearing impaired um in in one ear um and you know and it was so steeped in the in the culture of that new jersey northern jersey town you know that's over the bridge mm -hmm. where these cops come back to after they've worked um, so I don't know if it was just expectations, if it threw off what people were expecting from it. Maybe some people didn't think that Stallone was as good as uh, as he thought he was going to be in that. You know, we've talked about Stallone as an actor and he's really good at what he does. Um, but when he branches off, I'm not quite sure that that people are ready for him to do that or want him to do that. 
Um, but I, 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 I loved Leota in this, and I thought he was really, really great. I almost went with killing them softly, but ultimately I mm. wanted to go with uh, Copland as my choice. So, Kevy, where'd you go? I think Stallone should have won for Creed, by the way. That would have been. I agree I with you 100%. Great, great performance. Um, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned Killing Them Softly because that was one of the backups I, was, I wanted to bring up because Andrew Dominic, who directed that, did Jesse James. Uh, it's, you know, it's a really, really great film. If you haven't People seen don't it, know it, about it, too. Yeah. It's, it, it's great. It is incredible. Brad Pitt. Um, isn't Gandolfini in that, too? Gandolfini. Um, yeah, in I mean, it, like, Jenkins. Man, what a great movie that was. Leota's got a seen terrible that. death scene in that movie. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. Brutal. Oh, and also maybe like a great one of the great last lines, like "This is America, so pay me my fucking money." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. a great movie, man. Andrew Dominic is so underrated. Um, this was a hard one because it's funny because like I have there's there's I think Ray Liotta is an incredible actor in terms of genre and doing different genres. Um, I think he's great in comedy. I think mm. he's great in drama. Um, there's this there was this oh funny God, Kevin, movie. Please pick Hubie. I'm not going to pick Hubie, um, <laughs> but there was a movie. It is favorite, uh, you know? Yeah, I, 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 well, listen, I do. I, I, I mean, we talk about Hubie a lot, but um, one of my favorite movies he was in is a movie called Heartbreakers. Yes. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, a friend of the show, Ash Crossan, like tweeted at us right. today. And so oh, nice. uh, I'm not I'm not on Twitter, so I didn't see it, but I or I mean, I have an account, but I'm not on there. But I I um with this, I, I never I remember meeting Sigourney Weaver once at uh at the kennedy center and bringing this up to her because like it was i don't think people mention that to her as often they always bring up alien or ghostbusters or whatever sure heartbreakers is really funny um now granted uh, i haven't seen the movie in full in years i don't know if certain jokes are dated now and that's totally mm -hmm. possible so if anybody does go out to find it if there are things in there that aren't uh, well, i'll tell you uh, jennifer love hewitt know, has come out and said you know she's overly sexualized of that movie yeah and, 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 and she regrets and doing yeah. a lot of stuff and don't get me wrong i mean and, and this is not this my opinion is purely based on when i saw it i really liked it it was funny at the time i think it's an underrated comedy um there's a lot of comedies that have, are problematic nowadays 100%. but I just I always thought he was great in that. And I always thought he had great comedic timing. I thought he played that part well. It's like there's a, a, a there's a certain intensity to that role. Um, that is the one that I was going back and forth with between that and Field of Dreams. But I always think of Field of Dreams as such a Costner vehicle. But I mean, mm. Leota's character is such an integral part of that and kind of like the 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 fantasy aspect of it. And I do love that his character is based on a real player. And, you know, it, it, it to me it's interesting. I would probably go Field of Dreams ultimately, but I do think Heartbreakers is one of the ones that was creeping up there. Because again, if we're taking Goodfellas out, you know, you're, you're starting to go through a different parts of his filmography. I just think Heartbreakers is underrated. Yeah. Um, and I, and I do think that he's really great in that movie. Um, but again, it's been years, but I do remember loving him in that. And that's funny because that, that's one of the ones that comes to mind when I think of Ray Liotta in a weird way, because you you go to Goodfellas immediately, you go to Field of Dreams immediately. Um, and then there's these like one offs that were like random and funny. And like, I thought that one. Is Dude, Heartbreakers in had a great Jason Lee performance. Yeah, yeah. Gene Hackman is in it. It's, is it, it's a terrific cast. I mean, it's a huge cast. Kevin, uh, wait, so who, who directed Heartbreakers? David Merkin. I don't know who that is. I don't, I'm not I don't sure. know that name. Anyways, but anyway, so that's my that's my uh, um, choice for like Ray Liotta blend. I'm, I'm going to go Heartbreakers, but it, it's also asterisk to Field of Dreams. Um, and again, if you haven't seen Heartbreakers and you do see it, you know, I, I can't speak for the material in, in today's time. So I think I know where Jake went. Did you go below? You know, I was going to. That was probably my backup. Um, but but it, I'm also thinking about in terms of what he has to do. Mm. Um, I am actually doing Ray Liotta and James Mangold, but I'm going to do Identity, oh, which is a really, call. really fantastic. It's, yeah, it's a great ensemble piece. Um, if you don't know the film if you've never seen it do yourself a favor and watch it without looking it up it's basically Underrated. this idea that a storm brings together all of these strangers in a seedy motel and they all have a strange connection uh that they're unaware of that we don't really find out what it is until the end now what every one of that cast has to do is kind of play a role on multiple layers and multiple levels. But Leota has to do something that I'd argue is a little bit more difficult, which is get over the audience's perception of who he is 
and and the type of roles that he's played in his career. So I think people see him and they automatically assume he's going to be a certain type of guy. So he kind of both leans into that, but then also gives this extra layer of like, but maybe not, but maybe that's not who he's playing in this. Yeah. Um, and so he's got to play all these different layers while also keeping a secret embedded that we're not privy to just yet so i think what is asked of him um he takes it and runs with it in a cast full of people who do i mean it, uh, john hawks is fantastic in it um it's just a really really great cast of of, of people um it and, reminds um, me a bit of um uh bad times of the el royale yes 100 right. and i think honestly i think i have a weird affinity for strangers gathered at a motel kind of movies i don't know why <laughs> i love because yeah. like, i love bad times of the old royale I, I've, always, I've always been fascinated with this whole like a group of strangers 1402 stuck in a, yeah. yeah 1408 mm-hmm. um yeah. yeah uh and so so yeah so I, I but honestly i'm gonna wake up tomorrow and go why didn't i choose blow because what he does with what could have been a generic father character in blow he takes it and makes it just layered and heartbreaking it's just any other actor would not have been able to do what he did with that role well i did it amazing by the way Identity. Michael, um, if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's awesome. Michael Breen uh, said blow. Uh, he said uh, after Goodfellas, he went with blow. Ash Crossan, as mentioned, friend of the show, uh, said heartbreakers. Lucas Glansk went with Copland. Haley McCoy said the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Uh, Zen Jake said killing them softly. Robert Brass said field of dreams. John Palmer and many, many more said Goodfellas. The fact that that's, a, that's a pretty wide range of of selection I, of his that's yeah, that's a testament absolutely i like this because it actually kind of like you, you, you i like that we didn't use goodfellas because that is mm-hmm. the that is the one that everyone goes to and it sure. is i do like that we were able to celebrate some of his and like we joke about hubie i think he's hilarious in hubie um i, I just think that ray Liotta had a really great range and i think that it was uh, he was pinpointed probably more as the goodfellas guy um but in in and also one thing i want to bring up which is really key is his narration in goodfellas mm-hmm. um i think it's one of the greatest uses of narration ever uh he makes it personal personal um I'm, and and luckily you know jake and i got to talk to him for no sudden move i think sean you did too um uh I last did year i didn't get a chance to. And it was funny because like in that moment, he was paired with Julia Fox, uh, uh, who obviously has been in the news a lot recently. At the time, she wasn't in that sense um, because she was great in Uncut Gems and then kind of like blew up in the news of Kanye. But anyways, I was sitting there talking to him and I'm like and there was a split second decision where I knew I wanted to ask him a Goodfellas question. And I I was going to I was going to go, oh, maybe I'll get him down the road at some point. Mm. And then I'm just happy I asked it because even though it was a 50 second answer, he explained to me his process of recording that narration and kind of what the, the goal was and who he was talking to. Um, and then what's the, even weirder is the day he was that he died, the day that he announced he died. Um, I got an email that was going to interview him again on June 29th for an Apple TV series, two hours before his death was announced. Um, it's just a really strange thing, but I just, I'm just thankful that I was still able to get ask him a good fellas question at some mm-hmm. point. I don't, I don't I never gotten him before. And that was the only time I will ever have speak, spoken to him. So. So last week we were going to do hashtag Jennifer Connelly blend uh, because of her appearance in Top Gun Maverick. We pushed it back because of Ray Liotta. So we're going to bring her back for next week. So play along on social media using hashtag Jennifer Connelly blend or let us know your pick via email. Uh, Real blend at cinema blend dot com. Drop us a review on Apple Podcasts and leave us a star rating on Spotify. It helps the show grow. And uh, we said this all the time uh, earlier, but the best way for you guys to help us grow the show is to tell your movie loving friends uh, that you enjoy listening to Real Blend uh, with new episodes that drop on Friday. The next premium episode coming to your podcast services on Monday is going to be the IMDb game, uh, which I uh, hate so much but um because <laughs> there's, there's have, no actual skill involved there's like no you, there, there is no to it. there is no strategy no. to it uh sooner or later gabe we got to go back to the box office game that was a really good time and i think you and i were the only ones who played it so is that in the, the box office game? game i liked the uh the oh, trivia taglines the, like the tag trivia lines. game no 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 not taglines the box office game because now i play that box office game on a daily basis oh, we all played that we all played that together yeah, oh we yeah, all yeah. played that one? Oh, yeah, okay yeah. we only played taglines gotcha all right so um anyway we'll be back on uh premium like game premium episode imdb game uh listeners can follow us at jake's takes at kevin mccarthy tv at sean underscore o'connell at gabe kovach and the show is at real blend and because we've been told that it's not yet a no i'm gonna say elvis talk to you guys next week <laughs> Same as chance. Elvis.